What's up, everybody? Hi, all you minties, and welcome back to another episode of Reels Talk with your host, the amazing Amanda, and my lovely co-host, the Uncanny Omar. I am the Uncanny Omar, and together we are going to be talking about some season, yeah, season three of Umbrella Academy, right? Yep, and, season three, yep. And season four of Stranger Things, because, well, it just ended with season four. Yes, today. Part, volume two. Volume yeah. two. So yeah. both of these are Netflix shows. Uh, one of them has been out for a, a little over a week. Umbrella Whoa. Academy season three has been out for a, a little bit over a week, based on the Gerard Way, and uh, Sid Fabio Moon that does the artwork. Gabriel Ba. Oh my gosh, I can't even remember. Gabriel Ba. It's Gabriel. Okay, the other brother. <laughs> yes, yes, the other one. <laughs> um, based on the comic book, and then uh, Stranger Things, which happens to have a comic book too, based yes. on the TV show. Based uh, on the TV published show. Published by Dark Horse. So, yes. What's up? Yes. You haven't catched it. Okay. If you haven't caught it, you know no what problem. to do. Martin. It's good to we'll see you. We'll probably start with Umbrella Academy. So, if you watch that, Martin, then. <laughs> hey, what's up, Jeff? That that James. Hey, James. Um, maybe James. I don't know. Maybe, maybe rest in peace. Several things. Yes. So, okay. yeah. Hey, what's up, Kenny? Kenny, uh, we've got a lot of um, old favorites on tonight. But yeah, we're really excited to talk about both of these. I guess one is a full season. The other one is technically the rest of a season. So um, I guess yeah, we'll talk about... We, we didn't get to talk about Stranger Things Season 4, Volume 1 to begin with. So No, we, we just kind of mentioned... About the whole talk. season altogether. What's up, yes. Omar Amanda? Omar, did, you get, did I get did my hair? I mean, I combed it. Is that what you mean? No, it, Are you trying to say he doesn't usually comb his hair, Lionheart? Because that not for Friday nights, funny. not for Friday nights. This has been a while. What is, is this shirt <laughs> you're wearing? Is that an Umbrella Academy shirt, Amanda? It sure is. I don't have an Umbrella Academy shirt, but I'm wearing this because of things we'll talk about later on in this episode when okay. we get to Stranger Things, like the Dark Phoenix saga. Then, like the Dark Phoenix saga, exactly. So mm -hmm. yeah. Anyway, so let's talk about Umbrella Academy first because I know we yeah. just. Um, the Stranger Things season four, volume two, just dropped today. Apparently, when it dropped, it also created an outage for Netflix at the time when it dropped. I'm assuming because a lot of people are trying to watch it, is my only assumption, or if something got messed up. What I the heard things? that it was that the special effects weren't finished, so if you caught it early, it kind of leaked early, so they were wrapping up the special effects. That reminds me of like old school film editing as they are. I, in the like whenever they're doing a screening they are editing the next reel while the or while the first reel is still mm -hmm. showing oh, that's that's old school that's pretty cool um but yeah all right yeah go go watch stranger things come back and see us jesse it's good to see you yes uh, exactly oh, it's good to amanda see did you get your hair do please for love of god please uh, i, I mean i did it myself because that's what i did well there you go there's your answer line of course she did her hair Herself. A waver. It's not a crimper. A crimper no, I need to go back to Superman and Lois. It was really good. All right, Panda, let's kick it off with Umbrella Academy. I'll put a banner up in case anybody wants to know. We are going to be talking about the entire season of the Umbrella yes. Academy season four, 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 three, season one of Sparrow Academy. Exactly. And we are, not, and I'm not recapping the entire thing because that would be all night. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, let's, but, let's, let's talk about some of the major things. That yeah, happened. let's talk about the premise of season three, right? So obviously season two, we left off um, with what we thought was the Umbrella Academy saving the world. They come back in 1963. They come back to present day and find that they've been replaced by another version of themselves called the Sparrow Academy. Yes. A much more professional, better, if you one would say, version of them mm -hmm. in this, um, what we would consider a alternate timeline now. Because of events that happen on in the season, we realize that our our Umbrella Academy does not exist in this new world that's been created. And so the Spare Academy, of course, has our, thank you, thank has, you. of course, their, their folks. We've got their number one, played by Justin, uh, or played by Justin Cornwell. And he is Marcus. Uh, we have number two, which is we all know is Ben from the original Umbrella Academy, but in but the original um, group, Ben is dead. This Ben is very much alive, and he's very much a jerk. Yes, those are the actors who portray them. Um, then we have Brittany Oldford, who plays Faye, who's very much a 
matrix looking type character, the way that they do her up, which is awesome. We have um, Jake Epstein, which I was really excited to see. I, didn't, I guess I didn't really read up on the casting of this when it was first coming out and revealed. And I missed it, but was really excited to see this actor because he's in the show Degrassi. Love that show. Craig was a uh, character I had a major crush on when I was younger. So I was really excited to see Jake Epstein playing Alfonso, even though he's hardly <laughs> disfigured. <laughs> so you don't really know it's him, except he looks like a very disfigured Mark Ruffalo, which is, I think, what everyone on the internet was calling him. Was like, wow, okay. That's the Mark Ruffalo. And then we have Genesis Rodriguez, who played Sloan. I think Woo! Omar's favorite new character from the Yowza. Sparrow. My yep. goodness. That mm -hmm. girl is good. Um, yeah. who, who plays... Um, okay, wait. The, the last one, the last human is Cassie David, mm -hmm. who I didn't realize was the daughter of Larry David from Curb Your Enthusiasm. Curb Your Enthusiasm, the, the producer of uh, Jerry Seinfeld. Really? Yes, mm -hmm. that's his daughter. Yep, okay. and that she plays Jamie, who can spit venom, fire you venom that makes you hallucinate. And then Christopher, who we all have last seen, playing a version of the Tesseract in 2012's Avengers, Thor, and other... Uh, I see what movies. you did there. You're a liar. <laughs> Uh, was it was, was it did they cast somebody like Idris Elba to do his voice or something funny? No, that okay. I didn't see any. <laughs> okay, I didn't know if they went somewhere uh, funny with that or not. No, okay, that been awesome. so that is the that is the Sparrow Academy. That is the alternate reality. Uh, the very first thing they do when they meet the Umbrella Academy that is now stumbled upon their world is have a dance off, a oh. foot loose dance off. Do you have? I, got a the I know you got a gift of that. Of yes. <laughs> um, and this is all because of. Uh, the I guess the venom that's inside of uh... Diego, yeah, because she spits the venom on Diego, and he has this weird <laughs> hallucination, if you will, of all mm -hmm. of them dancing, um, dance battling to Kenny Loggins' Footloose, which you know, if it, it, it wouldn't be a Umbrella Academy season if they weren't all dancing at some point, right? Uh, right, yeah. yeah. I, I always think that this show goes way out of its. Um... Like to, to to make sure that they have the music locked down, so they have like the rights and stuff for the music for this particular show. Yes. I, now, it's... you know the version of um, House of the Rising Sun they used. Fun fact is actually Jeremy Renner's version that he. <laughs> what? <laughs> yes. Uh, yes. Well, I guess if you got a, if you have a failed app, you might as well try music. Really. Oh, uh, I, there, have, there, there, I have some of Jeremy Renner's songs on my uh, uh, my Apple course. Music. Of course you do. <laughs> of uh, course I do. So, yeah, that, there were a couple of covers I had issues with, but that's another story. Um, yeah, so here we have the return of the characters back to what we thought was going to be reality from 1963, where they spent the entire season. And just like I thought, this entire season is spent in this alternate reality, which... I don't know how I feel about that yet. Like, <laughs> because, come on, like we—that's that's what season two was. The alternate reality of the past. Um, we Same storyline, just changing it up a little bit. We have to save the world again, which I know they make jokes about throughout the season, right? Because um, mm -hmm. what we find out in this season is there was a paradox created by um, a character in season two, oh. Sissy. Um, her son, Harlan, who had extraordinary powers. Um, Sissy was the uh, woman that Victor fell in love with yeah. during yeah. season two. And um, he had helped her escape, her and Harlan escape. However, um, they were living, you know, undercover for a while, but they kept having to move around because of his powers would always get him in trouble. And then eventually she died of cancer, right? It was cancer, I believe, or something. Mm -hmm. She died of some type of illness. The same day, all of the people kids with special powers were born on October 1989 and it created this intense you know anguish in Harlan and he lashed out this power went over him and it killed all of the mothers of our original Umbrella Academy members so they were never born which creates a paradox because they never should be alive yet they're in the past I love time time travel, man. It's like but time travel and the different rules depending on who who is writing it and what you're yes. looking at. Uh, thank you for the super chat, Jack Ferry. Uh, Genesis Rodriguez. That's what Papa likes. 
That's right. She was easy on the eyes. Yes. Um, the, the, the whole paradox is kind of confusing. Uh, but so before we talk about the paradox, though, what, one of the things that I thought was handled really well was the character of, um, you know, Ellen Page, I think, uh, for people that yes. may not know, um, is now going by Elliot Page and went mm -hmm. and had um, – yeah, like uh, the full, it's full transition, right? Like a uh, surgery yeah, and everything. Yeah, he has, yeah. So yeah, I was curious how they were going to handle that here. I thought it was handled re really well. Like uh, oh, the yeah. way that her family, or rather his family, after he comes out and says, mm -hmm. I'm, this is who I am, I'm now Victor, how his family accepts him. I thought it was really sweet. And yes. even rumor for a little bit, and we'll talk about her in a little bit. Yeah. Um, even rumor had, you know, it's really sweet the way she was holding her and there, she was like there's nothing that you can do that will make me stop loving you yeah uh, and then later on um luther asked her or asked him to be his best man i thought that was really sweet it was that it was, was a, really, that good. Was a really good moment yeah. so i thought that the, i thought that the writing and the way that it was handled for the show it was done really well at least yeah. i think in, in a way that uh how do i put this i think in a way to open people's eyes that aren't, you know, don't normally see this like every yeah. day that yes. don't understand things. Because I think like that's that's what happens with television and movies or mm -hmm. or books sometimes or comics. Uh, sometimes it kind of opens your eyes to this world that you may not be familiar with. And exactly. I thought that was a really cool way of doing it. Uh, yeah. They don't, I mean, it wasn't in your face about it or anything. No. It was just there. It was just part of the story and they moved on. Um, yes. And then he was just his normal character, um, which right. still has his own host of problems <laughs> for being his own, the character that he is and his relationships with his, um, his siblings, particularly uh, Allison or rumor, because that, you know, while they have that wonderful moment, Allison just had to <laughs> go and ruin that wonderful moment with everything she does following to her entire family. <laughs> Let's just say this is the year of superheroes who just get really mad when they realize their kids don't exist anymore. It is a thing. <laughs> yeah. So in season two is when Rumor actually built a family in 1963. Yes. So she had to leave that family behind because yes. she thought, you know, she was going back to, to, to the regular and Ray. Yeah. Now when she wants to check up on that family, she realizes that the daughter is, is uh, what was it? Is it Claire? Claire, yeah, Claire, yeah. and then her husband Ray, and but there's another woman. It's not her, right? Yeah. So then Claire Which I still have questions on how could Claire be Claire if Allison wasn't the one to give birth to her? Wouldn't she just be a different girl altogether? So maybe I'm confused by how that works. Man, the time <laughs> travel, man. The time travel. Um, but yeah, she takes it really hard. Um, it leads to an evolution of her powers that isn't while more powerful isn't pretty for a lot of the members of the family including the um really awful scene she has with luther where you know he's fallen in love with the sparrow sloan obviously many men have fallen in love with okay, sloan. Well, not many me and jack ferry are not you many. and jack yeah. ferry yeah. and, and you know and rumor feeling lost and broken because she realizes yeah. her family that all her families that she's ever tried to make are gone um, except for this this messed up family she's been stuck with because of Hargreaves. Hey, Colin. Then she uses her power to, you know, make Luther want to make out with her. And of course she stops it, but, you know, it does kind of leave a sour taste in his, in his mouth, leaves that rift. And then, of course, um, was, what she later does to Harlan. That was uh, pretty creates, interesting to see because... I mean, obviously, they have feelings for each other. That, they did, that, yeah. that has been shown through the seasons. Exactly. Uh, but now he's found Sloan, and now rumor. It was really weird. Like, rumor's kind of snapping in this season. She was like, no, you're going to kiss me. Ah! Yeah. <laughs> he's like, wait, you didn't say. I didn't see that coming. I was like, you're going to force him to kiss you? Yeah. Weird. And then you're going to push him off of you when he's really aggressive because that's what you made him? Yes, exactly. <laughs> I I don't I mean I, oh man she now she is still fine as wine. Oh my goodness, that actress she's still my yeah. favorite. But man, her character this season has just been rough because yeah, then she takes it out on Harlan and 
We see a character get killed off screen. At first, did you think it was a plan? Like, okay, she didn't kill him. Obviously, that's a yes. dead, like that's not a real dead body. Something's gonna happen. No, she really killed him. Like off yeah, screen, she, really she killed him. Yeah. It's like, damn, that's dark. Yeah, that was intense. And now, of course, she I, I i understand her frustration for wanting to kill Harlan because we find out he's the one who killed all of their parents, thus creating mm -hmm. the paradox we are living in that has spurred the Kugel Blitz that is going to destroy everything into oblivion. And, you know, there we go. That's what's happening. So, yeah, um, you know, she's like, Victor, I don't care what your feelings are about this boy be, or this old man now because of your relationship with his mom. Look what he did to us. Look what he did to the world. And we have this, you know, never this world ending event once again with the Kugel Blitz all because of him. So, yeah. Yeah. I, so, I, I, I kind of saw a little bit of her point there. <laughs> I will say um, this season had a lot of ups and downs. I was a, uh, it was fun. Like, I think every season is. Yeah. I feel like some characters already have, like, an ending to their arc. So I'm like, what's the point of them sticking them sticking them around? And I really thought by end of season, some of those characters would be kind of replaced with Sparrow Academy members. Yeah. Brought over to this reality, which I thought was, it was where they were going to go. But I don't it's know. Yet. We'll get to the ending here in a little bit. Yeah. And, yeah, it is interesting because... There are certain Sparrow Academy members that obviously have, you know, we'll been, get there. We'll get yes, to the ending here in a second. We'll talk about it. So we didn't get to, you know, Ben obviously was a holdover, you know, as the previous Ben, same actor portraying him, but he has a lot of the same um, insecurities that Diego as a number two has, right? Am I good enough or am I ever going to be good enough for father? And he wants to be accepted and he wants to be part of the gang. And he just wants to be number one, even though, you know, in his mind, he never will, which is what Diego suffered through the first couple of seasons. Right. And Diego has his own journey about fatherhood this season. He gets to be a lot more playful with um, Lila, who shows back up from season two. Mm -hmm. And this son of theirs, Stanley, who we learn is not even his son. It's just Lila kind of barring him, which that yeah. poor kid, because he ends up getting a <laughs> like, um, yeah, like that poor kid didn't really need to go through all that, but she ends up being pregnant, right, with Diego's child, which is why she was going through all of that. And he has to learn to be, you know, to accept himself and be a better father to whoever, whatever kid he's going to have next, um, than Hargreaves was, which is, you know, and now Ben is kind of on his own journey as number two, trying to figure out, you know, where he's going to fit in with these this gang because the Sparrow Academy doesn't stay together very long. They die off um fairly no. quickly. <laughs> yeah. Which was really weird. Uh yes. uh so yeah they're all killed either by Harlan or by the big uh what, what is that thing called? The Kugel Blitz the wave the energy yeah. waves that the Kugel Blitz emits. So yeah. That thing kills them. Um it's kind of weird to see them get off like that. So this season is loosely based on the volume three of umbrella academy called hotel oblivion mm -hmm. and i know that like previous seasons you know they they make up their own storylines like season one was kind of volumes one and two the dallas and then volume one this one was kind of like a little bit of hotel oblivion including the sparrow academy mm -hmm. uh but i think they yeah they kind of did their own thing and like I said, I think um, I like I, I liked aspects of it. Yeah. And then other things, I thought it went on way too long. Well, that's what I felt too. Says like I remember I told you. So when we I was watching this, I started watching it before Omar was able to watch it, but I had to rewatch some of it because some of the um, you know middle episodes where we had so many side adventures going on at once um, did not start to hold. Did not keep my interest, I guess, is the best way to put that. And, you know, the, the penultimate episodes were great. Um, you know, I enjoyed when they when they all finally were able to get together and come together and say we have to work together to stop this world-ending event. We got the wedding. And then we have the revelations about the betrayals of certain characters and Hargreaves and all that. 
you know, climax, the climax there is, you know, was entertaining to watch. Right. Mm -hmm. But some of that middle stuff, I mean, even when five goes to visit Pogo, you think, Oh, Pogo is alive. That's so exciting. But I was like, Oh, this biker gang thing. And it's just <laughs> so I'm, many. I'm I will yeah. say he, he, the thing with me, I'm a sucker for alternate realities, yeah. alternate futures. But my problem with the season, and I really have no idea how anybody else feels about it. I don't really want to review <laughs> or anything. My issue with the season is that we just got back from 1963. We've had one season where it's been, and I know I say normal, but it's Umbrella Academy, so it's not really, where we've had a normal get to know the characters type of season to establish the characters, establish relationships, um, you know, and, and then get some character development. Then we throw everything into the blender for 1963. You know, yeah. they, they go back in time for one whole season. So then, you know, I remember at the end of that, remember the review, I said, I really hope season three isn't just more than this alternate reality. Yeah. And it wasn't. So they're still stuck there. And now we're thrown into another, at the end of this, by the way. So yeah, yeah. the remaining cast of, uh, the Umbrella Academy, because you're not going to kill any of them off. Nope. Even Luther comes back. Yep. Even Luther comes back for the dead. Which we'll get to in a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, you know, and Ben and who yeah. else? Slo Sloan. Sloan survive, right? Sloan. That's the and only then, yeah, left. And then Dad, the, or the uh, Professor, what's his face? Uh, Hargreaves, yeah. Yeah, he survives. Yes. So they go through a door, kind of like a reset, right? Like you yep. the whole reset button, let's reset the universe. All right, their universe is reset. They wake up. They're they're coming out of a door. They're coming out of Umbrella Academy, kind of like at the end of season one. And they all have lost their powers coming in this out of this new universe, which is good for a character like number five, right? You yes. Need a it's a kid, kind of like the little thing they did in Eternal. So we know this kid's going to age up quick. So we might as well fix that right now. Yes. Uh, Luther up. is no longer in the ape suit. Nope. Now just a really tall guy. Uh, yep. I think yeah, he's so tall like that in Game of Thrones. <laughs> tall guy, I couldn't tell. He was always on a horse. And <laughs> and then uh, you have the mystery of where's Sloan? Okay. Ben's yep. through here, but he was like, later, dicks. <laughs> he like bounces. I know, right? The Christopher, no, Christopher blew up. That's right. Because he, yeah, Christopher blew up him and Faye. Yeah, because yeah. they clinked glasses or something. And, it, and then they're. And then in a building, you know, from far away, we get a shot of uh, their dad still alive with uh, mom, right? The with the mom, yeah. And he's in. Is he an alien bug? Is that well, what he is in the? Yeah. I think it was established. Yeah. Okay, in the comics, I can't remember where when that happened. I think they they did establish that last season that he was some kind of alien. Yes. Okay. Have to remember. Uh, but, yeah, that that's kind of where it ends. So resetting this history, kind Which of, is weird because that's not what I expected to happen. And where it looks like Hargreaves owns like almost everything because there's like a number of buildings with that with his mm -hmm. initials on it, for example. So now we're stuck in an alternate timeline that they have memories of all these other timelines, but obviously there's gonna be characters that don't. And then what what do we go from there? All right, so the question is, I didn't understand how the universe reset machine needed mm -hmm. to suck their energy, but Allison stopped Reginald from completing it. So how did it, it, they end up with a new universe? Because she still pushed it, right? Like, yeah, I guess it was me. done and all that. Yeah, I think they told her to push it and they end up, she ended up pushing yeah, it. Yeah, because she said, do you trust me? So I wonder if he had stayed alive, would it, that have had the same effect? Yeah, exactly. So there was no need to kill him other than dramatic effect. Yeah, dramatic. Like, I'm gonna, I'm not betraying you guys anymore. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm gonna kill our father for you. But she still hit the reset button anyways. Um, which is what he wanted. So Steve Blackman, the Umbrella Academy showrunner, told TV Line this initially yep. plan for TV series is only four seasons. Well, yeah. I, they don't have any other source material. They have the world of Umbrella Academy, but that's not really the you know the main writer and artist on the yeah. book. And who knows when? I don't know. Is My Chemical Romance touring? I don't know when the next. Book they are. Out. I mean, as far as oh, I remember, they, are, they, okay. they started. They're coming out with new uh, music, so I guess uh, Jardway is a little busy. They've kind of done a reunited kind of thing. Oh, okay. so they're coming back. Uh, but so he may not be writing anymore. Umbrella Academy, 
So it's really going to be up to whoever the showrunners are to think of how they're, you know, I'm sure Gerard Way probably gave him ideas of where he may want to go. Similar like George R. R. Martin may have given the uh, Davids some idea of where the story was. Yeah, I, and, and I think that's okay. Um, so overall, I think the season was, it was fun, like the previous season. I yeah. think the CG is getting worse, though. I can't remember the CG being that bad in season two. Like when she's yeah. spitting things out of her mouth, like the character from the Sparrow Academy, uh, that was some horrible CG. Yes, uh, it was. Just lots of use of green screen and blurriness that kind of meshed the characters with the background. Just looks really cheap. Yes. Do you know, like, was there a budget cut? I mean, I know Netflix was losing money. Uh, yeah. But, but I thought that was after this season had already been filmed. Because it seems like they got really cheap with the season as far as, like, special effects. Um, because I, I don't mean, know. Go ahead. The, other than the hallway scene in the big library, I can't. I, I don't know of any other, like, sets that they had to build for this season. They yes. spent most of their time in those specific areas, so I can't remember if there was an actual set build, you know. But you're not the only one who thinks that. I mean, there's like okay. a couple of – now, I know that the um, – I think it was 2021, the whole main cast negotiated um, pay raises to at least $200,000 per episode. So if they were going to have to cut back so that they could keep the stars they have um, – doing the show, then yeah, there, it probably came from somewhere and maybe it was the uh, special effects budget. And that's why the CGI is looking a little mismatched and the green screens in the backgrounds because they had to pay their actors more there. That could have been one of the reasons. Um, I, it, just, it was, it just looked, yeah, it looked bad. Also the ugly face cat had really bad makeup. And I mean, there is a reason why Luther walks around with a shirt on, right? Like, uh, yeah. Cause you like, can't have his ape suit. I'm like, that's like, right. They're not going to do that the whole time. And yes. it seems like, and honestly, like uh, the I ending, remi- the, the very ending reminded me of that. I'm like, Oh, next season, they're not going to have powers. That means that like, they're going to have to, they definitely gonna save money that way because oh yeah, they I mean no special effects with the stuff they can do. I mean, oh, and yeah, rumors, rumors also missing at the end because she's back with her family. So is that something like is the reset button something you wish for? Well, that's what um because I think uh Unique was saying mm-hmm. she removed Sloan since she's the one who pressed it. And but that's such a dick move because she went back. I know she goes back to her daughter and her husband, and then poor Luther does no one like that's not fair. But he has his normal body, it's not like he won't find someone else. He's not a bad looking dude, he's kind of bright. I don't give you this. Luther's not a bright guy. Nobody wants to hear, Hey, you're not a bad looking dude after you lost your wife. Like, that's the last thing you want to hear. You're gonna bounce bounce back, you're gonna be all right, dude. I don't think anybody really needs to hear that right after you know he's like, Where's my (laughs) wife? Um. Yeah, I don't know. This, uh, th- yeah, I'm not gonna downplay. There was some bad CG in this season. There was, and yes. I think all the money went to if you if you're if what you're saying is right, then the the actors, which of yes. course deserve uh, some of that. I don't know how Netflix determines who gets what though, because it's not like it's a movie, right? Like, oh, we made so much money, like we can justify paying them this or a TV show where the ratings are in. I don't I don't know how ratings work for streaming, but. Uh, I think that and the music, even the cover oh, happy yeah. Jeremy Renner music. Uh, okay. <laughs> no, but you're right. Those probably all play a factor into the budget. Um, you know, there's could be other reasons. I'm sure it, cause I think it was being filmed, um, you know, height of pandemic. Um, so there could have been some, that could have increased production costs, which could have then affected costs on the back end um, when they're trying to get everything ready for for release. So that could have been a factor as well because all those increased protections they probably would have had to take once they were allowed back on set, et cetera. All that costs money, right? And yeah, I think a lot of shows um, have cited those rising production costs because of the COVID-19 pr- pandemic. So okay, yeah, that could have been another issue. So let's talk like, so, you know, we talked a little bit about like overall the season, the different plot points that we have kind of come across, what are your thoughts on how, obviously we're back in another alternate timeline, which you're not too uh, keen on, mm-hmm. but overall how the plot was handled. How do you feel about that? I, okay. So 
um, I know we're talking about Stranger Things here in a little bit, we but <laughs> I, I, I both like and dislike the idea of separating characters. I think characters work together as a unit and feed off of each other. That makes a good show. Yes. When you have different personalities coming together and, mm -hmm. you know, that's, that's what made Arrested Development so good, at least seasons one through three. Yes. And then season four is they separated all the characters, giving them their own spotlight and sh episodes. And that kind of yes. ruined the show for me anyway. Uh, yeah. And I feel like they did that in season two with this show, separating the characters, giving them their own little storylines. I think it was great. You know, Victor found love. Uh, so did Allison. Uh I guess in a way, so did uh, what's his name with Layla? Uh, Diego, yeah, yeah. And then this season, they were doing the same thing again, and then turning characters on each other, like this family on each other, mm -hmm. with the same kind of plot device that we've had in the past of loss. Yes, like the whole white violin story arc, right? I, I think it's mm -hmm. like we're going back to that, but now we're using rumor. Um, still fun. I had fun. I wanted to get to know the characters of the Sparrow oh, yeah. uh, Academy. Uh, quirky characters because you need quirkiness when it comes to this particular show and when i'm always asked what do i like better do i like the comic or the show better i actually like the show better because yeah. the comic is just kind of bland it's kind of like and i like gerard way i like what he did i love that he's a big fan of x-men and doom patrol but it does feel like a poor man's yeah x-men doom patrol like that's it there's nothing really that stands out uh quirky about it yeah I, th I really think what helps with the show, what makes it for me a little bit better than the comics, which I've read, um, you know, The White Violin and then of Dallas, but I've never read Hotel Obliv Oblivion. But what makes it better is the actors, right? I mean, mm -hmm. they just bring the characters to life so well. And I guess that would in turn be the writing as well is not that it's not terrible either. It's pretty good. So I think those two combinations help to make the show just edge out a little bit more there. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. I agree with that. Yeah. So I think it's, you know, it's a good mix of that. So yeah, throwing in a whole new element of other characters, I thought it was going to be enjoyable and I wanted to follow it for that aspect. But then we're back into the same routine of characters separating and being by themselves instead of getting to, to figure out the, the mysteries. Right. Yeah. And by the end, I really wanted a kind of a new cast. Like, okay, this is going <laughs> to, you know, you kind of fanfic things in your head. Obviously, yeah. Luther and Sloan are going to stay in this dimension, and the siblings are going to go on without him replacing him with Ben or somebody. It's the way that I <laughs> thought it was going to end. But instead, we reset it. I assume that's because of contracts or whatever. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's yeah, that's pretty much what I have to say. The, the plot line was okay. I think I enjoyed season two a little bit more. I think season two had a little bit more heart. Other than the Victor thing, the way that the Victor thing was handled yes. in this particular season, I thought that was beautifully done. Um, I'm trying to think. What what else did I like? Oh, I guess the love story between Sloane and Luther was pretty good. It wasn't terrible. It wasn't, ugh. Yeah, I mean, it was... You know, Luther's an interesting character for me. He's not hes not one of my favorite characters. They've tried to really give him some more to do in this season, um, make him quirkier, I guess, than what he originally was as, like, the number one, uh, which I don't know if that hurt or helped his character just by, you know, overall for the whole season. But, you know, obviously, they when they write the characters, Klaus, they write well. He They give that guy, you know, he just takes that character and runs with it. Him and Five are always going to be standouts. Um, even when they go off on their own little side stories, which they typically do mm -hmm. uh, for for every season, they've seemed to go up their own little stories that kind of veer off from whatever everyone else is doing. But it was cool to see them. You know, you got to see Klaus and Diego like team up together, right, in this season. A little bit. They had some interactions, which is great. You had to see Rumor and Diego team up, which you yeah. never really see. Like when no. they go and pick a fight with those racist folk, I guess, to, for lack of a better term. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh, just to get some aggression out at the that was yeah. pretty uh, unique. Because uh, those two characters aren't really with each other a lot. Yeah, but I think what really like what I was hoping for, and I think you kind of hit it, was not necessarily a character reset, but you added all these Spare Academy members, and they some of them got like Alfonso, for example, or even um, Faye or Christopher the Cube. They uh, didn't get a lot of screen time, and then they're unceremoniously very killed, like killed off 
Um, Mark is meticular, that poor guy. I really thought, because he's an actor two, who... Two episodes or one? Two, I think it was... Did he die? I can't remember if that was a episode? twist of the ending of episode one or, uh, or at I the end of episode he, two. I think he died at the end of episode one. Wow. Hmm. Okay. Or two. Yeah, one of the... I think it's, he, he didn't it was last early on, I know. I yeah, thought, which oh. is just like... But I guess if you're going to introduce all these new characters... It would have been cool to see more out of them and really see what the differences were between them, except for just focusing in on Ben I, and that he's really just a version of Diego and kind of a jerk now. And yeah, yeah, has to go through his own thing. Um, but, so who who is the showrunner? Who is the I know James brought it up. Is yeah. there like a, a specific do, directors that they have that they use for this show? That's a good question. Um, as far as the Umbrella Academy showrunners are concerned, so you have um, hold on, let me pull this up. Steve sure. Blackman and Jeremy Slater are the creators for the show, and then as far as the directors, you have a number of um directors for this season. You have uh Paco Cabezas, Jeff King, mm -hmm. um, Kate Woods. And Cheryl Dunye. So I don't like no names that really stand out for me just off the top of my head as far as uh, directors for this particular season. Got you. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then go ahead. I was just going to say uh, if the special effects team still did it, like the same as season one or, uh, or two. Oh, that's a good. It seems yeah. like they're using somebody else. Like they're almost outsourcing the special effects uh, to another company than the uh, ones that they've regularly used in the past. I've not seen any of these shows, so just passing by to say hi, happy Fourth. Thank you, brother. Thank you so much. Yes, happy Fourth of July. Come back when you do see the shows. Come back when you watch them. Um, yeah. So I think that's it. That, that's all. It was fun, quirky. Same thing as. Volumes one and two. If you watch those, yeah, you're probably gonna watch these. Anything else left to add, Panda? Before we give our final score, no. I mean, yeah, like you said, it was fun. It had its moments where it shined, and moments that you know I felt like I was drifting to my phone to play solitaire sometimes. Sol and solitaire. Yeah, That's I'm like level sixty six on solitaire, baby. I am killing it. Uh, and also mining. Uh, Bitcoin currency or something. I don't know what I'm doing on this app. But anyway, <laughs> other than that, it um, it has, you know, it gave us another alternate timeline. It gave us another world ending event. Kind of would like to see maybe season four not be about the world ending and maybe we can try a different avenue. You know, maybe the season's about them navigating without their powers. Um, though I have a feeling season four will be a way for them just to get back to getting their powers or how do we fix the timeline so we can have our powers again these powers that some of them didn't even want didn't care for but you miss a good thing when it's gone right yes <laughs> that's true yeah. was that a rhetorical i thought it was a rhetorical question um, <laughs> yeah. yeah so out of 10 what would you give season three of the overall Umbrella academy i think i would probably give it a seven out of ten Seven out of ten. Anybody else that has seen it, uh, let us know in the comments or in the chat. Uh, what would you give season three of Umbrella Academy? I think, um, yes, yeah, six and a half. It was fun. Yeah. A lot of misses, unfortunately for me, but uh, we'll see what, what happens next season. Is it already picked up for a season three or yeah. I'm sorry, season, four? season four? Yeah, and um, like they said earlier, that's where the creator wants to end it, which I think is wise. Because now that we've been three seasons in and we're already saying, okay, how many times can you redo the world's ending storyline um, and make it more convoluted and crazy? Then I think it's time where you realize this is a show that's it's about to run its course. And I don't know what the viewership numbers were like when you check out some of the streaming, the sites that try to track streaming statistics. But I know it's not one of those. It hasn't been on the lists, on the top tens or anything like that. So, yeah. So people are saying eight. Seven and a half, seven out of yep. ten. Um, yeah, it's, I think that's a fair rating. And I'd like to see more of the characters back in a normal kind of atmosphere. Agreed. Because um, whenever you have quirky, abnormal type of characters and you put them into a normal type of scenario, 
they stand out more. Kind of like that, that's the I think that's probably what the beauty of Doom Patrol is to me. Mm -hmm. Is that the characters seem to stand out more because they're you know they're going on everyday adventures to these normal places. Exactly. And then eventually you lead up to the final confrontation that you need. How many times have you watched Umbrella Academy before this stream? I I think season one, I just watched it one time. I much i I think I watched a couple of episodes twice to do our review whenever we did it. And then season two, I think I just watched one time. Yeah, same. I think this um this season I only watched it once. Oh, uh, I watched a couple episodes again because I like I said, I was like, ah, I need to rewatch that. I don't I probably got distracted and don't remember exactly what happened in that episode. But for the most part, it was just one way through and then a couple of episodes here and there I need to uh, rehash on. So it wasn't one of those, you know, there's some shows that I can like rewatch if say I watch it without my husband and then he's like, well, I'm going to watch it too. Like Stranger Things. <laughs> this season I've had to rewatch several times all the episodes out. <laughs> Except for volumes, uh, volume two, because they're they're each like two and a half hours, and well, the first I only one, have so many hours in this Friday to do that. <laughs> the first one was an hour and a half. The second one was two and a half hours. Yes, because uh, my my oldest daughter and I watched it today. Um, so yes, that's our review for that part of the episode. Let's want to move on. Yeah, let's talk about Stranger Things. All right, let's do that. Season four. Spoiler. So, just yes. in case you haven't seen it, I am putting a banner down at the bottom. Stranger Things season four. Spoilers. Yep. Uh, I'm gonna put volumes one and two, just in case somebody hasn't seen volume two yet, because it came out like a month apart, I think. Yeah, they came out a month apart, and there are actually some people I know who have maybe only seen one episode of the first half of season four. So Did they want to binge it. I th that or I think life got in the way. I'm not really sure, but oh, I, yeah, there's that. I forgot. Yeah, about there's that. life, but I when I see that. something like Strange Things, I've got to binge the whole thing and just get it over with. Yeah. Uh, so really quickly, season one was one of the best TV shows I saw. It was great. Uh, some hits and you know, lots of hits. A little bit of misses. Uh, yes. For me, that was a like a nine, nine and a half type of show. Season two went downhill. Ooh, season two was rough for me. That was yeah. probably a even with Sean Aston. Five out of ten for me. Season three was not that much better. That was probably like a five, five and a half. At least the kids were together. So that's my rating. Nine, five, and a five and a half for seasons one, two, and three. What about you? Um, definitely have to go with a nine, like you said, for season one season two you know it's funny because i don't remember much of season two and that probably is an indication of my enjoyment mm. of it so i'd probably give it maybe like a like a five and a half six but i really did enjoy uh season three i like the addition of robin i love the addition of max and billy uh even though he was like one of those villains you love to hate man and so i like the that entire you know that entire that entire uh, season a lot more. So I would give that probably like a seven, half or eight. Cause yeah. it was definitely a lot better. The, then there's season four, which is what yeah. we are finished with now. Uh, so yeah. So nine, five, five and a half for me. Uh, so, so obviously going into this season, I was like, okay, it's going to be the same stuff. Let's just go ahead because I like the characters. I want to see what happens and they're older. Let's wow, start. are they older? Not, yeah. but not in the, not in it, just by appearance. Well, I guess <laughs> what, three, three years have gone by. Has gone by since. No, no, really. No, it was like nine months or something. It wasn't that long. Oh, that's got what, up there in high they, school. No, no, that's why everyone was like, "Wait a minute, couldn't you make more time pass?" It wasn't that long. No, no, season year. season one was nineteen eighty three. Season two. Oh, was yeah, I'm yeah. sorry, yeah, but yeah, I wait. thought you thought in between season three and four. No, no. Okay, so season, yeah, season one was nineteen eighty three. Season two yes. was nineteen eighty four. Season three was eighty five. This season is eighty six. Yes. Uh, okay. Okay. I was like, what? Nine months? Holy crap! Those kids of age. Gotcha. Okay. <laughs> uh, so yeah, we we have Stranger Things. Or back, we have a background for Stranger Things. I did. There. I put one in there. Yeah, it's okay. just the Stranger Things four. I got you. I got you. 
There we yeah. go. Yeah. Oh, that's now, cool. I like that. Now it's, it's a nice official. background, actually. It works. So it's three years in the showtime. Showtime. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right, so in this season, we have something new. We have a new nemesis. We have a, uh, something evil uh, that is lurking. You know, started with the big, uh, what what the hell did they call it? The, the, not, season, the season one, the monster. Oh, the not the Demigorgons. Which yeah, are the, the Demigorgon from season Demigorgons. one. Demigorgons, yeah. yeah. So started with that, then yes. the dogs from season two, then the yes. big Cthulhu. The hive season. mind. Yeah. yeah <laughs> season three. And then this, it's. I remember watching it with my daughter, and I thought, oh, this is like Freddy Krueger territory kind of gives him a character and i kind of like that i thought that was really cool to do in the show uh yep. and sure enough i mean they obviously it was very blatant but basic uh based on freddy krueger because they even had robert had him in the england. background at blockbuster or the video store well and then they had robert england in that character yeah. um you know the character they played scene Rest in peace, Beckness nose. Yeah, let's talk about what, when you become a villain. How do you lose your nose? How does this happen? What? God, I mean, that's creepy. Villainy takes my nose away. I've lost my sense of smell. <laughs> so there is a lot of things to talk about. So we're focusing on the last two episodes. Amanda, you are the best at doing recaps. Can you give me a quick recap of like what happened previously? What did we learn about Vecna? What what's happened to the yes. why they get separated? So Vecna is our primary villain in this season and. By the end of this season, maybe next season, it maybe. sounds like. So Vecna is actually um, a man or was a boy named Henry who had intense telekinetic powers. He also was very dark and had a very dark you know, mind and ended up killing his entire family. And what he did is like he contorted their bodies. He tore their eyes out. But he... From the intensity of his power, he passed out. Everyone thought his father did it. His father was played by Robert England later on as he was an old man. Because um, all this takes place in the 60s, I think. Yeah, 60s. Mm -hmm. Yeah, around the 60s. And so um, the man gets sent off to prison. The little boy doesn't didn't die, but his sister and his mother are dead. And so Dr. Brenner, who we all know from the first season and this season, because he didn't die when the Demogorgon attacked him. Surprisingly enough, he managed to live after season one. We just haven't seen this whole time. He uh, he has actually the the initial beginnings of the program that Eleven becomes a part of later on when she's born. He is our number one. So Dr. Brenner takes him in. He wants to pretty much use his blood to recreate his powers. And, you know, therefore him and Eleven are connected in that way, right? They're part of this experiment. And... He becomes an orderly at the institution where all the children are are um, housed and trained and monitored. And he kind of takes a liking to Eleven, I think, because she's, she's little, she's bullied, and eventually kind of in that way is able to use her to free him from the inhibitor that Dr. Brenner puts on him, which then in turn causes him to kill What's everyone. Michael Collins? Could I get a birthday hey, card? Happy uh -oh. birthday, Michael. Shout out. Look Happy who it birthday. is. God dang it, man. How did they find you? What did, did you me? put in, what did we put in our thing that they're like, oh, I need time for it? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's you this time. Uh, maybe Victor Creel was Freddie, and that's why maybe he looks like Freddie because he is played by Robert England, right? So mm. maybe Magnus is Freddie's child because he is a Creel. He is the real dream child. Look at that. Mind blown. Mind so, blown. Happy birthday, Michael Collins. Um, now, Yes, and so after he kills everyone, Eleven sees what he's done, and she's the one who ends up using her powers to create the first portal into the Upside Down world, sending him into the portal, and then he becomes this Vecna crazy version of himself, and he eventually finds that hive mind, takes control of it, essentially, I guess, is the idea, and now he's kind of in control overall of everything happening in the Upside Down world. So he's our... We fi figure out he's our big bad that, you know, has been in Will's mind this whole time since season one. Um, him and obviously he's out to get Eleven in some way because of what she's done to him. And he's out to get the world because he feels like mankind is awful and, you know, a restart. Maybe <laughs> he wants to restart the world, too. Uh, with the upside down crossover. World. crossover yes. So, of course, you know, he's doing things in Hawkins. And, you know, killing off um, teenagers, which lands a teenager, Eddie Munson, in hot water because everyone thinks he's killed someone, um, a cheerleader that he did not kill. She was just 
you know, happened to be in his trailer when he was selling her drugs. And then Vecna got her and he targets um, certain students with traumatic past who have been, you know, their minds are weak. They're dealing with a lot of trauma. And of course, he also gets Max um, and she's kind of been a, she was a victim. They have an amazing episode early on in the early volume where Kate Bush is running up the hill, helps her as well as memories of her friends get away from Vecna, even though we come to find out. Kate Bush is running up the hill. Yeah. Kate, <laughs> Kate Bush herself is running. I was like. Is Kate Bush is running up the hill. <laughs> uh, I was, my daughter was telling me that that song is so huge on TikTok right now. Yes. And I love it because I, I saw a meme, you know, like when uh, Michael J. Fox, his character in Back to the Future is playing Johnny B. Good. And he's telling them, he's like, oh, well, you may not be ready for that, but your kids are going to love it. Right. So they, they're saying the same thing about Kate Bush's song. Yes. Like, <laughs> it was hilarious. Because I don't think anybody well, really respected the song back then. No, I don't even think as far as chart wise back then no. in the 80s, it did particularly well. I mean, everyone was like, yeah, but that Tiffany, I think we're alone now. That's a hot jam. <laughs> that, that's that's everybody's TikTok jam this week. Why are all the hoppers bald at some point? First, there was Sarah, then 11, then Hopper, then 11 again. They should be called bald. Oh, my God. Kate Bush must have bought another yacht from the streaming. Yes, world. I hope so. I really hope so. I really I like when yes. an old artist like that. Like, well, it reminds me of like all the music in uh, – what was it that we found uh, – Oh my gosh, it was the songs. It was like 80s type of music, but it was done by a foreign band. It was another show that we reviewed. And not Eurovision. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Anyway, doesn't matter. Let's keep going. Keep going. Yeah, let's keep going. I don't know. But now I'm like, what? I okay. need to read. Anyways, so of course, every all these events, because of what Vecna is doing, gets all of our group involved. But in volume one, they're all separated because, of course, at the end of season three, all right, season, season, yes, season three. Um, I'm getting Umbrella Academy, this one mixed up now. Like, yeah, who has how many seasons? You got it, you got it. Yes, so at the end of season three, the buyers, um, after they thought that Hopper was dead, moved away, moved to California and took Eleven with them and kind of like adopted her as their, as the daughter, Joyce mm -hmm. did. She's a good woman. And, um, and then she also, you have Mike going to visit them for spring break. So he's with that crew in California, but then you have um, Nancy and Steve and Dustin um, and Robin all trying to help Eddie. And then of course, Lucas shows up and Erica's there too. Lucas and his, his younger sister, Erica. So you kind of have them all split up. And then you have our third story throughout volume one, which is Joyce realizing she gets a message from Hopper, realizes he's still alive. He's in a Russian prison, gets um, that, crazy guy that they met back in season three to come and help her get to Russia. They managed to find out who they need to find to get Hopper out of prison. And yeah, and this, this second half volume two, boy, the jokes about how much weight Hopper lost. What is it with David Harbor and the weight jokes? Cause in black widow, they were making a lot of jokes about him being like overweight and stuff. And then of course there's a lot of jokes in this one about just like, wow, you look like, because he lost a lot of weight in prison uh, when he was locked up by the Russians. So, wow, interesting, you know, jokes. Poor David Harbour. Him and his <laughs> I think he's doing okay for himself. I think he's doing okay. So, yeah, so by the time we get to volume two, we have, you know, it's kind of our climax, right? The team and Hawkins know they have to get to the Upside Down world. Uh, first of all, because Nancy's kind of stuck in there at the moment in the beginning of this volume two, right? because Vecna got a hold of her because he wants her to give Eleven a message about how he's going to destroy the world. So he doesn't kill her. He just wants to give her a message, but of course also revealing to her who his or his origins, because she's was the one kind of do all detective work. So the team at Hawkins, they're coming up with a plan on how to defeat Vecna. The team, um, the team in California trying to get to Eleven who went with the doctor. We, that's when we found out Dr. Burns alive to get her powers back. She managed to get her powers back. And of course, she, you know, is really upset because she also learns the truth from Dr. Brenner about what happened, like how he, how Henry, like what he did to Henry. And she blames, she blames Dr. Brenner for the, his treatment of Henry as the way Henry turns out, which honestly is not really even Dr. Brenner's fault, uh, as Vecna tells him, because he's only human 
Um, you know, Vecna is just Vecna. He was always going to be that, you know, at some point that crazy and that world ending monster that he turns out to be just didn't know it was going to be a different universe. Uh, so you have that storyline where they're, they're meeting up, which they never do in this volume, right? Um, even though the military's after her, some secret government organization to try to capture her or take her because they're blaming her for what's going on. Um, she has her powers back, so she's able to stop them and kill it. Of course, Dr. Bernard dies in the process. This time, I think, for real. Dude, she took... Yeah, this time for real. She <laughs> takes down that helicopter. <laughs> yeah. Like, the Dark Phoenix. I was like, okay, that's cool. Not only that, but she crash, like crashes the helicopter on top of... Yep the other military uh you know police that are there could you imagine wow. her, her darth vader and like a force off like who would like <laughs> uh darth vader okay there i mean why is that even a contest <laughs> what? <laughs> what are we talking about here um so yeah that that then they go and they realize even though they're all separated they can still fight vecma like their own way Oh yeah, I exactly. love that. I love that plan, man. I thought it was cool. Yes. Like all the kids planning it. Like, okay, we're gonna go get guns. We're gonna. I was hoping for a montage. We're gonna go get weapons. Yes. Uh, you know, Max is gonna. Max is gonna lure him, and then we go to the other world. And while he's busy trying to get Max, because you know they point out the fact. Wait, we know eleven. You know, we know her weaknesses too. Let's yeah. use that against Vecna. So exactly, that was cool. So they all have a role to play in this, even though they're all separated, because. Yeah, even Eleven realizes that she can help Max out. She can fight Vecna while, you know, they're far away. Exactly. Even the stupid Russian plot point, which I couldn't stand in volume <laughs> one. I know. Florida had something. Relevance. They were able to, they could, they broke back into prison to kill the Demogorgons. They realized, oh, wait, they're part of the hive man. If we destroy them, we can destroy part of the hive mind. Oh. Cultist Hellfire Club, deeply devout religious <laughs> man who is trying to be a man of his faith. Is that that dude that got killed by the burst? Yes. Ah, I loved it. Can I just say that was like I loved how unceremonious that was. It's just like that's how he deserved to go. Yeah, <laughs> just... My my daughter and I both went. Yeah. yeah. Oh my gosh! But this, I'm not gonna lie, I did tear up in this yes. because of a particular character, which we'll talk about here in a second. Um. But yeah, the plan's coming together. Max is going to keep him occupied. Uh, meanwhile, uh, what is his name and his little sister? Um, oh, Lucas and Erica. Yeah, Lucas and Erica are going to keep an eye on her. Erica's going to guide everybody with the flashlight, the people in the underworld. That that was cool. That I know, cool. I love that. Oh, yes. Uh, Robin, Steve, Nancy, they all go to the underworld. Meanwhile, Eddie and Dustin have to keep the hell bats away from everybody. Yes. Exactly. Oh my god. And I <laughs> yes. you texted me when I was watching that scene. I'll be like, wait a minute. <laughs> Eddie just started playing his guitar. Yes. Oh, it was, it was a Metallica song, right? And it was the yes, perfect was. song for the montage because it was a mon like it was a, a bunch oh. of different scenes of different characters doing different things as he's just laying it on that guitar, right? Just great guitar solo and this different things are happening, action a, scenes, and it was Fabulous. He was a master, uh, how, master you know, of that. puppets. Master of puppets. I almost said meat puppet. That is not the right term. <laughs> this show has definitely ruined it. What? Dude, that part was awesome, Jesse. I oh, loved I love it, man. That part. What a badass uh, way to go out. Anyway, well, he didn't go yeah, out. Yeah, but I mean, music, they do such a good job in this um, in the show. Yeah, this is another show that I think spends a lot of money on music. Yes, but they do a good job with it. Like, so when you get to that final. I guess battle, if you will, where um, Eleven, you know, you have Mike telling her that he loves her in her head and she's trying to, you know, as she, as she looks like she's going to be defeated by Vecna in his lair with his ritual he's doing. But then you have the combination of which you, the, the Stranger Things theme song that bleeds into the Kate Bush running up that hill song. Yeah, that was so nice. beautiful. The way they use that music there. It was, oh, that gave me, yeah, that was fa fantastic. Just, they do such a good job of music in this show. No, that was, that was definitely the sound department that they did an amazing yes. job. Mm -hmm. um, but yes. That scene. Uh, when he looks at the guitar and he's like, what did he say? It's like this. He said, it looks like you were made for this universe. Like, yes. <laughs> oh my God. And grabs it. 
I I looked at I looked at my oldest daughter and I'm like, if he plays the guitar while they're beating the crap out of Hell Bats, this is the best show ever. Exactly. <laughs> Close. Oh man. Um. Yeah. So you know, there was a team up be between both of those characters. There's obviously this love relationship too, like um, not like romantic love, but like a almost like brotherly love brotherly or like, love between like a mentor to him, right? Yeah. Well, I mean. Dustin doesn't have a father, right? So we have no. this kid that like doesn't have a dad. An and he, looks to, he looks to older people, right? Like uh, yeah. Steve, and they're not much older. Steve, Steve and yeah. Eddie for kind yeah. of mentorship. Um, now we we didn't talk about, but the, there's the character of Will, right? Like obviously, Will in this season has had um, not much to do. <laughs> well, I was gonna say I think it's um. He has a very complicated storyline because obviously he has feelings for his friend, right? Like Mike. Yes, very much so. Everything is very laid. There's a lot of hidden meaning behind everything he says to Mike this season, particularly in this volume. Okay, in this volume, it was pretty much clear what he was hinting at. I don't know uh, if it's in, last, Mike. <laughs> in, in the last volume, I thought um, that it, it's hard to read a character like this, right? Because you're obviously, you know, if you're watching a movie now, you you definitely are like, okay, that character obviously has feelings for the other character, right? But in yep. here, it was like, oh wait, hold on, I just came up here without seeing the last episode. Spoilers flew through my mind. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Go, go, go watch the last episode, Marta. Go watch the last episode. No, um, please. So, in this, um, or in the, I'm sorry, in the previous volume one, it was like. Will was this character? It was a little harder to read because I didn't, I didn't think it was romantic. It was just the character that was trapped being a child, because we forget that. I mean, he had this whole traumatized like experience, right? Like, yes, he was. He lost part of his childhood by going to the under know, upside down world. Yeah. So when that happens, and you come back and you see your friends like go get girlfriends and live their lives and you just want to stay and play Dungeons and Dragons and keep everybody together. Man, I felt so crushed for that kid. And I know obviously the thing was to notice that, oh, okay, he obviously has feelings for Mike. Yeah. But what I noticed was this kid is just like trapped being a child and he doesn't know how to grow. In this, I think they are obviously showing that he has feelings for Mike and thought the uh, finally what's his face gets a good scene. Uh, the brother. Uh, oh cannonball. yes, I know. His brother's uh, finally the, getting a cannonball. You know. Cannonball. I just think real name's Charlie. Oh my gosh, what is his name in the Dwayne? Whatever his name is in the show, finally he gets a good scene other than getting high and like, you know, it's this uh it's a nice scene with his brother. I thought that was a really beautiful scene. It was. I mean, because it's true. They they used to be close and then right. all of a sudden, you know, and that's what happens when siblings grow up. Sometimes you grow apart and you don't tell each other as much, but he's he had his own stuff going on this season too right he mm -hmm. was getting high all the time he's doesn't know what his future oh, holds hold on and go ahead right, and mario i'm gonna fix that for you you can just leave it blank and then say fans are extremely mad yep. on twitter because that, that fits anybody these days i don't know Woo. yes you could put anyone in there but yeah he finally had something to do with this episode with this episode i don't know how much he had to do but he had something to do he had something that i mean he was driving yeah. he was driving yeah he He's did driving. come up with some good ideas but so did his friend with the uh freezer and the the 600 pounds of salt oh. from the pizza shop and yeah. i love that he made an actual pizza while he was also doing all that that was fantastic <laughs> you're on your face with that pineapple though Hey, yeah, I know, well, but I do love about that. I don't know if in the 80s people were tripping about that as much as they are now. Okay, so then we have, yeah, this whole, this plan kind of craps out. It kind of falls apart because that's where you get, what's that dude's name? Uh, where's my, uh, Jason Carver comes up with his goons and, you know, he threatens Lucas and his sister. Obviously at gunpoint, he threatens yeah. Lucas. And I'm glad that Lucas beat the crap out of that kid. And I'm Maybe. glad that Lucas kind of came to be. He was like, I, you know, when he was beating the crap out of him, he was like, I thought I wanted to be you guys. I yeah. thought I wanted to be popular. That's not, you know, you're 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 not what I wanted. I thought that was no. a nice touch. That yeah. was a nice touch. The season had a lot of good moments. Um, so 
Dude, oh, sh dude, I thought Max was going to get killed. And at first I was like, she's not my favorite character. So if they're going to kill one of the kids, or, you know, uh, I, I was hoping they killed the dude that got high. But what? I dude, been okay with that. Michael Cleveland, go back and watch the show. Yes. And come back and then It's our job. Me. We have to do it. Okay, it's not our job. But we also have to do it. What's your I job? I was waiting on AT&T all day. Carry He's on. still waiting on AT&T, guys. I don't want <laughs> to. AT and T ain't come. You should I'm be calling. shocked to you the internet and that we're doing this right now. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how I'm doing. It. I am so tired and angry. Okay, so yeah, the the plan falls apart. Everybody gets captured. I have to say, I gotta give the show props too for using tentacles, the most classiest way that you could use tentacles. Because anytime I see tentacles, it always goes back to anime. <laughs> Not even hentai. Just anime. Don't don't you shake your head. I, at me. Not, when I think of tentacles, the first thing I think of is ooh, <laughs> tentacle form. Like, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I just think of. Well, um, even, I would never want to get stuck with a large giant squid in the bottom of the ocean. Uh, <laughs> you know who would? The deep. The deep would love the it. Ooh, would that love is it. now. That's also what, what I would think of when I think of tentacles. It's probably that. I would not. I would not. I'll go back to anime. So. Yeah, they're, they're all kind of – okay, so then we go back to, like, Eddie and Dustin in the trailer, and they're like, okay, we got to get out of here because that was the plan. Steve told us to bail, right? Like, we got to bounce. Let's get out. So Dustin leaves the upside down, goes back to the regular world, and Eddie has a flashback of leaving um, – Annie, was that her name, the cheerleader? Uh, Christine, I think Christine. her name. Christine, yeah. okay. Chrissy, leaving sorry, Chrissy. Her. Chrissy, okay. Leaving her because he was – you know, he felt Terrified. like – he was a coward, right? Like, yep. he left her in the trailer because he was scared. But not this time. He was like, I was, he didn't run. Him. Oh, my God. He got on a bike with his trash can shield and his yes. sword. What a badass. Yeah. Well, let's, yeah. And then, of course, that never really leads to a, a scene. We had, a, so we had a, several deaths this season, right? Or this, yeah. That the end the of last season. part of the season. Well, yes. Did, did Dr. We Brenner. Huh? Did we have several? Deaths this season? I just thought of him and the. Well, I mean, like, well, besides the characters that died at the hand of Vecna, but this, the last two in volume two alone, we had Dr. Brenner. Mm -hmm. um, and then, of course, Jason bites the dust. And then, of course, the one. A lot, a lot of the characters, does anybody care about Jason? I don't know, but a lot. Well, I was happy that he died. I now, the he, other, now, there's he one person who hasn't died that I would like to. That's that B I T C H who. Well, did what she did to Eleven. What was her name? I don't care. But she needs to oh, get she some. She got her nose broken with the roller skates. That was bad. But still, Eleven gets in trouble for it. It does. Yeah, she didn't get her just desserts yet. I but if like Eleven she's... didn't get in trouble, it wouldn't have rolled. Into Led to everything that, we... that <laughs> got her into a freezer at a. The hell's the name of that pizza place? Surfer's Pizza. Is that what Surfer's it was called? Pizza. Sure. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But so yeah, man. So I'm not. Gonna... Get... Go ahead. No, no, you go ahead. I've been talking. No, then we get the 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 death that I think a lot of people are like. Well, obviously, because he's a beloved, he became a beloved character because they wrote him so well. Of course, they're not gonna they're gonna kill him off because why wouldn't they? Stranger Things. Thank you to Bob and um, that cute little Russian guy in season one or season, well, season two. Season two. Season three, right? Three. That guy. Yeah, season three. But that was the guy that we liked. That yeah, died. not not Billy. No one was that heartbroken when. Justice, really? justice for Barb season one. Justice for Sean yep. Austin season two. Justice for the little Russian guy we cannot remember. Dimitri, was that it? Maybe Dimitri, yes. Okay. And now, my dude, Eddie Munson. Eddie, man. Oh, I cried at his death scene because he. It was really poignant because I loved like so. Basically, when he goes out on his bike, he's trying to keep the hell bats away, right? And Dustin decides that he's going to go back and save Eddie um, and falls back into the upside down world. And since Eddie had moved the mattress away, of course, Dustin hurts himself. And he, you know, but it all kind of happens at the same time as when Eleven and everyone is fighting this hive mind in different areas. And the birds go actually end up leaving because they're, you know, Vecna's injured or whatnot. And Eddie has gotten extremely hurt to the point where he's not going to survive. And it's just a beautiful moment. 
And he said, you know, this is going to be my year, right? He's like, I didn't run. I was brave. Oh, my God. Everything he said. I said, don't you do this to me, Stranger Things. This is too much. I can't take it. <laughs> but it was a it was a it was a very beautiful and poignant death scene. I'll say that. Yeah, it was it yeah. was nice when, you know, he made him repeat it, you know, yes. and take care, take care of them. like I thought that was nice because, like I said, uh, Dustin's a character that it feels like he doesn't have a father figure. Right. So he looks to Eddie, he looks to Steve for those mm -hmm. kind of like leads in his life. So, yes, I, I was sad. I was, to see. I, I was sad. Honestly, I'm surprised just because he's such a beloved character. They didn't kill Steve because he had a good redemption arc. Yeah. Now would have been the time to kill him. Yeah. I'll be interested to see what they're going to do with that. Cause they started to lay, they started to lay little nuggets and maybe, it's not going to go anywhere, but they've been leaving nuggets up to the point where Steve basically reveals to Nancy, who's seen that he's grown and he's changed. I love that he is a snacker, a snacker vice. Who did who did not who did not love not Eddie? Love Eddie. Oh, it's the only reason I have this shirt is because of him. It's the only reason I'm going to steal that shirt from him. Man, that she just yeah, he can wear, wear it. it. <laughs> I'm still going to wear that shirt because well, she's not going to for Halloween. <laughs> it's a man that she'll. She'll get rid of it next year, and I'm going to be wearing it. I'm like, yeah. hey, remember Hellfire Club? And you're like, yeah, oh, that Club. the Dark Phoenix saga? Um, yeah. <laughs> but that is so, not okay, so that, and then we also get, like, what, you know, Beckman's like, he, he wins. Like, he tells Eleven everything about him, like how she sent him there, but he's kind of this amalgam of this place and yeah. number one and – and even though it looks like she defeats him, she doesn't really defeat him. Um, she just hurts him. Now, he does, so we think he was like, that was, that the, was great because I was like, oh, he's going to go and kill. Like, he's like, I'm going to make you watch yes. before I kill you. So he, he starts doing the same thing to Max. Do we have a gif of those? Because that's a horrible way to die. Oh, God. You know, it's a, a, phone is yeah. like, yeah, that's it. How'd it go again, Amanda? Can you do that again? <laughs> yeah, that's good. That's good. Yeah, like something like that. <laughs> that great. Wow. All we needed was some sound effects. That was awesome. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That, so you needed four kills, right, to activate this Armageddon. And the fourth kill was Max because he had already been in her head. That's why she became part of this plan. So he was like, I kill her, and then here we go, Armageddon. Yeah. And then Mike, being the heart of the group, was like, no – Kind of like what I always say. We need uh, Mickey, right, for Rocky. Get up, you yep. son of a bitch. <laughs> yeah. You know, like that, right? Like, I love you. you need, yes. Except it was, like, about love. Like, I, I love you, Eleven. I've always loved yeah, you. Yeah, it's like Samwise Gamgee. Without him, Frodo never would have made it to the mountain. Don't you make me cry, bitch. I know, <laughs> but it's true. Yeah, I love that scene. <laughs> I love that scene. <laughs> With... <laughs> oh. All right. Woo. Okay. Um, yep. Where were we? Yes. You're about to cry because I love that. That's the that's the most beautiful scene. Are you talking know, about like, in Two Towers when he's like? No, I'm his... talking about you may not. I may not be able to carry in, but I can carry carry you. you. Yeah. <laughs> that gets How about Sean in? asked to bring us some heartfelt rules to from page a, to screen, man. Oh my god, my friends, <laughs> you kneel to no one. Get get out of here. Stop it. All right. Yeah. Back to the show. So yeah, we think Max is getting killed because her body's all. Like she's got blood coming out of her eyes. Her body's all like, Ugh, <laughs> yes. And you're like, oh, she's dead. Cause dead. It's God, dead. I remember the first leg that got twisted. I'm like, they can fix that. And yeah. then her arm, and I'm like, maybe. <laughs> and then her eyes start getting white and blood. I'm like, oh, she's she's gone. She's dead. Even if she <laughs> wakes up, she's gonna be blind. <laughs> <laughs> Which is, we learned something new about Eleven that she can now almost resurrect people in a way yeah because she like entered and explained and nor did she no. claim that she did that no she hasn't told friend. anyone yeah no. they no one knows that because i mean when lucas is holding max in his arm she's like i can't see everything hurts i don't want to die and then she kind of goes and she was uh, gone for a minute is what lucas tells everyone when they're in the hospital later and the 11 never says well i was there with you right but i was in her mind and then she enters her mind and makes her remember some stuff. And I guess that's what helped resuscitate her, maybe. But she's in a coma by the end of the episode season. Mm -hmm. And according to the doctor, she may never wake up. And we don't know what's going to happen with her. And what now she just cast it up. 
So at least her arms and legs will heal and over time. And I don't know about her eyes. She may be blind because of what he did. Because just because she resurrected her doesn't mean she like cured her, right? Because she still had to wear she'll the cast. Like, she'll be like our daredevil next season. Yes. Just the complete. Maybe she'll gain power. Eleven's powers because of what she's been through. But I still think. I don't know. Season four or season five, I think it's Will's season. It's going to become like if it's going to be the last season, which everyone is talking about, it is with Will being the start of it, Will will be the end of it, especially by the end of this season. Where Will's where Will and have Will and Mike have that conf, that talk in the old buyer's house about how he can feel him now that he's back in Hawkins, he feels him again. And yeah, and we, we see the reunion between Hopper and Eleven. Oh, that, was really sweet. that was really sweet. Oh, God, that that, I will say that about season. Three, the letter that he wrote her, and I think it came out at the same time that I noticed my daughter was growing up. That that got that got me hard because it, yeah. you know something you do want to tell your kids. No, exactly. Um, yeah, we see that reunion, and then we know there's a bigger evil. There's something, and and we know Beckman's not that. He's out there walking around, and we have this giant hole in this town. Yeah, and people are still living there. Like, eh, I'm just gonna go to my job. Yeah, some people leave, obviously. We see that, you know, as the California guys finally make it all the way back, they're all the only ones going into Hawkins. Everyone else is leaving. News crews are out. Of course, they're still blaming Eddie and some cult activity, which, you know, of course, we have a really nice moment with Eddie's uh, uncle who and Dustin at the refugee center where Dustin and Robin and Steve are helping out. And Dustin tells him, like, you're – your nephew was a hero and I was with him. You know, he, he yeah, wants to kind of like he didn't survive, like he fell into the not earth only like, is, did Eddie die and sacrifice himself, but the whole town hates him. And yeah, that that's was, the worst part. And that was so nice because because Dustin was like, you know, he, he he sacrificed himself for an entire town that hated him. That yes. I mean, he's a real hero. That was awesome. I like that. That was good. Yeah. That was a nice touch. Uh, James said that the Duffer brothers told TV line that season five is going to have a time. We better not get to the nineties. We better not see the nineties. I want to end it in 1989. They can wrap it up after that. They've got, I mean, they have to do something significant because it's taken, like, obviously this one was delayed because of the pandemic a little bit, but these kids have grown. Yo, yo, man, when Will showed up out of the car, I'm like, does he have like a five o'clock shadow? Or is it my 4k television? Yeah. These kids have grown too much. Even 11. I mean, she doesn't, she's, yeah, she's a woman. Like, I mean, she's how old is she? Oh, how, how old is she? Eighteen. She's eighteen. Okay. Oh, oh yeah, because all you know, people made a big deal when she turned eighteen just recently, like a few months ago. People magazine. Um, no, people in general, like on Instagram, countdown till yeah, as if that's something you, that we you have. can say pervs. <laughs> I don't think there's yes. anything wrong. Pervs were making a countdown to turn eighteen. <laughs> there we go. But yeah, she's eighteen. The rest of them are you know, around the same age, right? So. And we all know that Mike, I still can't get over that kid, just like shot up like a beanstalk. He looks like the lead singer of All American Rejects. And <laughs> these, these 80s I mean, clothes do not like. Do man, not do this. Like, no, they didn't make kids that tall in the 80s, man. I'm telling no. you. So the clothes, yeah. is, like they look so silly with these uh, things. I think they will have kids, if I'm not mistaken. They never mentioned that what specific time. So that's interesting that if there's a, because. We know that by the end of the season, so the season ends with they're all in their respective areas. Um, the buyers, they're back, they're, back, they're back home, right? Yeah, they're back home in Hawkins, um, just around Hawkins doing stuff. And then they start to see ashes. And Mike's sister's like, you know, say, oh, look, it's snow. But we all know it's not snow. And as they start to walk away from the buyer's house and into an open field, they notice that it's almost as if, the upside down world is now coming to their world. Cause you start to see that as this ash from the explosion of the earthquake from the center of town is falling on the plant life and it is dying. And it looks mm -hmm. very eerily similar to what we are seeing in the upside down world. Yeah. I wonder why sometimes why I wonder, uh, yeah, and I can't spoil things on the show. I, I've learned that. Uh, but even in comics, I, I, to me, the comic book would have meant a lot more if they had killed the character and they had stayed dead. I know that's ridiculous to say. Um, it, I think it cheapens it, of course. TV shows and movies, I feel the same way. What What is the purpose of this character? I mean, 
Because if we're going to have her lying around in a hospital bed all next mm-hmm. season, and then she, at, by the end, whenever that happens, and she's like, she wakes up from her coma, she's like, hey, no, what's everybody's the happy. Yeah. You know, unless they do have a plan for her. Yeah. I and maybe the they same. do. I felt the same. I thought, like, maybe they should have kept her dead. Yeah. Because it would, or maybe that was. That she was- the way that they can see that they, they had to show that Eleven has powers to resurrect people. So if Mike or Will get killed. Because if Will gets killed, <laughs> yeah. which is a possibility, someone's going to sacrifice themselves next season. Brando Sandal, what's up, Kyle Davis? How are yeah. you, my brother? Hey, uh, Kyle. I just got back from running up that hill. Oh, <laughs> no, good did, job. No, you did it. not. You did not run up that hill unless you listen to it. What if Eddie comes back like Hopper? He wakes up and upside down he has to find a way out we thought the same i'll be honest with you uh oh. i thought we were gonna see like barb in the upside down like a me too mutilated like uh, barb and i'm like oh this is vengeance for barb or justice for barb whoops that hashtag movement a few years ago yes but we did it right like she's dead dead like not even a corpse i thought we yes. were here but we didn't even see that max is gonna wake up, uh, Rick Grimes. They're all gonna be demogorgons. <laughs> because, well, I was thinking about how, like, if the hive mind, you know, consumes Vecna, like, yeah. The stranger thinks kids would be fifty or fifty-one year old and present. That, that, okay, first of all, 50, if they do, not, a, if they do, not it that thing. old. Fifty's not that old. I'm just gonna throw that out there. It's not that old. Yes, but if they do an it style thing and they get adult actors playing like adult versions of these characters. Like in present day, that would be weird. No. I hope they don't do that. They better get Bill Hader to play uh, Mike because he played 100%. him in it. Hundred <laughs> percent. <laughs> yeah. They don't look anything alike. They don't look I mean, anything alike, but I would Mike always go with Hader. the Bill Hader in anything. So that's fine. I'm okay with that. <laughs> He's I've fantastic. only seen bits and pieces of Stranger Things, but did like season yeah. one. Oh man, it, it was yeah. It's, it's, it's you need something it's to binge. It's definitely hit and miss, uh, Kenny. Um, all right, Amanda, let's talk about we talked about this this season a lot. What were the things you didn't like about this season? Was there things that you didn't like about this season? So I think you know, especially with oh yeah, volume, we're gonna rank the seasons here in a second. So when it came to when it came to the storylines and everything, because this 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 season was very similar to what we talked about on Umbrella Academy, right? Everyone was separated. So you're missing some yeah, of that cast. Very similar to season two. Exactly. So they had a lot of that cast chemistry you usually get is gone. Um, even when Mike does go to visit California, him and Eleven are immediately separated pretty much. So you don't see or get to interact with Mike at all in the season, which, you know, it was a shame because they had some really cute scenes in season three when, you know, Hopper's trying to be a dad and they're trying to, be teenagers or preteens, whatever age. They're trying to you know, make out. Trying to make, make out. out, and they can't do that. Three inches. Keep that door open three what? inches. Oh, but <laughs> so that so what the, what the happened then is that some of the storylines, like early in the season, felt just weaker than others. Obviously, the Hawkins and Indiana, because everything's happening there. Um, you had the most group of characters together, right? You had like Nancy and Robin, Steve. Dustin, anytime Dustin's in a mix, he always seems to bring the best out of a lot of people. He just has really good chemistry with a lot of different characters. And also Eddie, which everyone is a new favorite. So you had a great core cast of characters working together. The problems were mainly in there, right? And you had a good villain with in Jason, right? That became a villain in his own right as an everyday villain. And then, then you had the California storyline, which ended up being a California and Eleven storyline. Eleven's storyline was interesting because we brought back the doctors um, and her trying to revive her powers. But the California storyline, them going to Susie's house, all of that just felt like they needed to fill some time for the episodes because they wanted a certain number of episode count. And then the Russia storyline um, early on was very weak to me. I could have done without it, but I do. I'm glad we got Hopper back and it did help in volume two where him and Joyce and the, and Jock and Hagar <laughs> decided they were going to go like, it, <laughs> yeah, it is not his name. I don't remember the actor's name, but that they're going to, you know, help them fight. I figured that out, making them part of the plan. 
I like the Duffer Brothers were able to bring them into the fight in some way. I do appreciate that, even though the kids had no idea. No, James. I'm not a fan of Susie. I said it. Do I not said it with Nato. I ain't a fan of Susie. I hated that part. Yes. So, yeah, that was, to me, the weakest part of the season was just when they were separated, some storylines ended up being a lot stronger than the other storylines. And, you know, and also, you know, justice for Will, I feel like the poor character in, like, yeah, he's been stunted, but his story has been stunted, too. They don't seem to know what to do with him and any of like after season one, they never, they haven't really known what to do with him since then, except to be this kind of like the child that can't grow up. He's doing a lot of inner turmoil. And now we're dealing with his. I feel you, John Paul. I feel you. We, we, we feel you. We're, we're here with you. Yes. It's a lot of emotion this season. It is a lot of emotion. So it's, you know, I feel bad for Will. I'm hoping that they're, you're going to see him really take, you know, maybe they're going to cut his hair. Because if you want just for Will, give him a damn haircut that's better than his bowl cut. It is awful. He is too big of a boy now. He cannot wear that hey, bowl hey, cut. Hey, 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 That was hot in the 80s, okay? Oh, yeah. I thought, didn't you have something similar to You can that? go to hell. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> Leave people oh. with bowl cuts in the 80s alone. I'm just saying, they could give a hashtag okay. justice for But there cut. could be more. I'm hoping there's more for Will to do. Um, if not, kill the character off or give him a, a heroic ending and let him be. Um, don't just keep you letting him be traumatized and not me. get any type of, you know, growth throughout five, so like now we're on fifth, five seasons and growth seems to be something that he's not getting. Everyone else is growing, but he's the only one who's not. Which makes sense for his character. I kind of like that. Um, yeah, but I hope that means that it's going to lead somewhere in season five. All right. Um, let's see here. What don't you like about this season? Very minimal things. Uh, number one, it was just nitpicky things like, you know, 1986, terms we used. Ain't nobody, Ain't nobody used, kids weren't using the term internet back then. What the hell is that about? There's something or, else they said. Tracking into the school system. I'm like, okay, I know that the internet was around in the mid 80s, but it was like, trial you know it, it, like uh universities high-end universities that would talk to each other yes a high school and a kid where was she in utah Had yeah in utah. utah get the hell out of here that that very like i said very minimal that bothered me um a couple of phrases they used the russia plot line uh, whatever yeah that's it i love the season yeah I love, I love this season i thought this was uh I think this was my favorite season. If I gave nine, like season, so season one was a nine. This is a nine and a half. Yeah, I mean, very. I mean, this was a, almost a ten for me. I loved it. I thought yeah. It was great, uh, introducing a new character because you know when you always have a chance of like when they introduce Max, uh, you always have this like <laughs> oh it's the new kid syndrome, right? She's not gonna fit in. They're gonna be like mean to her. Um, but not these kids, but. Uh, the audience, I meant. Or the yeah. same thing uh, with, when they introduced Robin. Oh, it's the new character, which I thought they were going to kill off, but they didn't. And in this, we had Eddie. And Eddie was like, even though he wasn't in every episode and he didn't have a lot of big moments, except for his final episode, yeah. he was great. He was, that, he was that part of the 80s that was missing from the show, which is like the, the, the heavy metal, the rock death metal part of the 80s. And I thought that yeah. was a nice addition. Uh, yeah, I have no complaints about the season. CG, it's like, holy crap. <laughs> Whatever money they siphoned out of Umbrella Academy season three, they totally used yep. it for this season. Well, except for when Vecna becomes Vecna. That still looked a little like... Yeah, it had a little off. They haven't done that. They used practical effects. They used makeup on him, and you could tell. Oh, yeah. Well, and he, you can look his Instagram. It shows the process of him becoming Vecna if you watch oh, it. Oh, does it? Okay. Yeah, yeah. it's really cool. Yeah. It looks, it looks like makeup and stuff. So I thought that was nice. Um, Yeah, not nine and a half. What would you give the season? Yeah. So overall, I really enjoy the season. What I like the most about it, because mm -hmm. um, we're always talking about how they connected to the 80s, right? And yes, while they had the Nightmare on Elm Street vibe, what I really liked is the real life Satanic Panic, which is a real thing that happened in the eighties. Oh God, and how yeah. well Dungeons, they connected Dungeons and Dragons, that. all that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was so perfect how they connected all that together. It's almost like they were getting up to that point in the show. They wanted to get to this era of the eighties where that became a thing. We all know there was some murders things that happened. 
um, in real life that led to satanic panic. Um, and of course the heavy metal that was coming out and the Dungeons and Dragons. And so people can't wrap their heads around these things. And I love that they were able to connect that to this real life thing that actually happened in the eighties. I love when you can do that with history and, um, fiction. It's, I think it's wonderful. So that was great. I enjoyed the cast. I am mad Eddie is dead, but I love him. And it was a beautiful addition. Joseph Quinn, I hope that we're going to be seeing him on a lot of other things soon. He's Game a great actor. Um, but other than that, I would give this one, yeah, nine and a half out of ten. Almost a ten out of ten, if you will. I loved it. Especially that, I mean, vol- the, the two volumes, they maybe, you know, went on a little long. But no. it was perfect ending. You liked it. I'm no, sorry. you're fine. You liked you it. Know, no. I, I'm, I, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off. I just. Uh, no, you're fine. No, I. I. I thought it, I didn't know that they were an hour and a half. Like when I watched the first episode of season four, I was like, oh, that seemed a little longer than usual. I was surprised when it was an hour and a half. So to me, I thought, holy crap, this season was so good. I didn't even notice that it was an hour and a half. And then, and then when we got to the finale, I'm like, I I looked at my daughter and I'm like, I don't think they're going to be able to wrap this up in two and a half hours because there's so much that needs to happen. I, I love it. Yeah. It left uh, a lot of great cliffhangers for us coming into season five. That makes me say, what's going to happen? I need to know. Well, NATO, what about like King's Dime? You were listening or hanging around the wrong people in the 80s. Because you, you did have some death metal in the 80s. Yeah. But very cool of him. I mean, 1986 with Metallica and that particular song. Yes. Eddie was in the know. Uh, only additions. Thank you for the super chat, Bird. Yes, Only additions you. that would have made the season a 10 out of 10 mm-hmm. uh, instead of a 9 out of 10 is if Jason Carver survived and Kai, a.k.a. number 8, joined the fight at the end. Yeah. Wait a minute. What happened to that? Is that the kid from what? the Chicago episode? It's the girl. Yeah, I don't know what happened to her. I forget what her, the really end of her arc episode. was. You were born in 1988. Ouch. I was born in 85. That's only, that's only three years before me, though, so I feel you. Nato. Uh, my favorite song after watching season one, should I stay or should mm-hmm. I go? Yep. Favorite song after watching season four, Running Up That Hill. I think everybody's favorite song, my dude. Yeah. Uh, I like the nice little touch to, to season two. Yeah, ending of season two with uh, I'll Be Watching You. That was played again at the prom or the, the dance yep. scene. That was a nice little touch. I thought that was great. Let's see. h and control room teaser felt really scary, I think. In season five, Kali could beat mm. uh, team up with Vecna or Eleven. I mean, we might we might get the return of Kelly, right? I mean, she was that her name, Kelly, or Kelly, yeah, Kali. yeah, it was Kelly. Yeah, those that's Chicago. <laughs> People really hated on that episode. I can't imagine that was a weird name. part. Yeah, that was weird. That was season two, right? And that's where season two was just a little. It well, it was shot really nice. I like. I did appreciate the way it was shot. Um, Let's see. Thank you for the oh, super chat, Shockwave. Shock Ethan Hawke as a cameo in, is season five alongside. She Mariah looks just Williams. like her mom, man. Is, is Ethan Hawke her dad? Yeah. Oh, really? Okay. She's Maya Hawke, but she's Uma Thurman and Ethan Hawke's mm-hmm. daughter. Yeah, but she looks like Uma Thurman. Wait a I saw her in a uh, Quentin Tarantino movie, I think. Was the I, heard he, I heard, speaking of Ethan Hawke, that he's very, very good as a villain in Black Phone. Um, well, I thought you were going to say uh, Moon Knight. Oh, that, that, that was not going to say, say what the hell is wrong with you. Not that he's not, I mean, he was a fine actor, but I hear he's very, very good in that. I heard that's a very uh, great film, too. Hey, you so, know what a great film is? I won't is? watch because I'm terrified of. That I, I've, heard, I've heard it's a really good film. I don't know if you heard this one or not. Uh, Top Gun, to Maverick. I you know. know By the like, time we're going to see it, it's going to be I think it's on be HBO Max. Paramount Plus? I don't know which is it a what I don't want to watch that in the comfort of my home. That's a movie I go see. We'll have to go, but not before we go see Thor Love and Thunder. Which comes out next week. Which comes out next week. And we I already love Ethan Hawk in that sinister movie. I love Ethan Hawk in the before trilogy. Because I'm a connoisseur of good movies. That if you've not seen the before trilogy, it is beautiful. It's I love fantastic. that. And Ethan Hawk is wonderful. He's wonderful in boyhood. Uh Ethan Hawk. He's one, you know what the greatest Ethan Hawk role is though of all time? Explorers from 1986. <laughs> that movie. My biggest crush, uh, what's her face was in that? Um, uh, Amanda Peterson. I think she passed away a couple of years ago. That was like my first crush. I really liked her. I had a good soundtrack by James Horner too. 
Yeah. Um, uh, so yes, what would everybody give? I'm so sorry. What would everybody else give? This yeah. What would season? you all give Stranger Things season, season four? four. Would you overall. Season four overall. Yeah, because it's yeah. weird to split it up between the. Let's two. not split it up. Yeah, because volume two is basically only two episodes that are. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's not split it up. But yeah, what would you all give season four? Let's know in the comments below. Oh, James said that uh, Top Gun will go to Paramount Plus. That's what I thought. Yeah. That's okay. What I thought. Thank you for but that. We'll so be there it. with uh, the real world and um, was that Daria? Right? Who? Daria, because it's MTV. Uh, nine out of ten from James. Ooh, sports card combat, like a thousand million out of ten. You really like this uh, this season. What, yeah. what did you give it? I gave it a, a, a nine and a half out of ten. I've pretty much given it. Yeah, yeah you're in, we're in agreement. That, that yeah. hardly happens. Sometimes Probably now, Jaws gave it a nine. Sunoco gave it a 9 out of 10 as well. Shockwave gives it a 10 out of 10. And he, you're right, he was more engaged than he was in season three. Absolutely. I think I so agree. as well. I agree. I think so. Season, and don't get me wrong, season three had its moments, but cease, this season kept me watching. I yes. was like, what's happening? What's going to happen next? It's, it was, it's my favorite season by far. Exactly. Yes. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Ethan Hawke was good in The Northman. Oh, isn't that out? It's bad and what? No, it's Walknado. It's out in uh, it's on Paramount Plus. Yeah, I'm about to watch that. I've seen. Uh, I need to. I need to finish watching, and I started watching. And uh, season three felt like a bunch of commercials. I kind of like that though. Like mm. nostalgia plays a big role for a lot of us that go into watching things like Stranger yeah. Things, like the memories of going to the mall. Or, or or even when they go to the mall, you look at all the stores that are no longer around. I think Aladdin's Castle was one of them. Um, yeah. Natural Wonders, rest in peace. Oh, um, all these other stores those. that have gone, you know. I don't know. What's not around anymore? Radio Shack and uh, oh, Circuit, Circuit City. Like so many yeah. stores. A lot of those stores. And just those two-story malls. Peacock. And stuff. I mean, most Thank of you. Our it's, two it's on Peacock. Go yeah, ahead. Peacock. Most no, of what? Uh, yeah, most of our like two-story malls like that have been torn down or barely have anything left in them anymore. Actually, that gets more like a 15 out of 10, but I still love season four. 15 out go. of 10 is a pretty damn good rating for this. Pretty good year. rating. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I enjoyed it. My kiddo enjoyed it. And just, uh, I can't wait for season five, which I didn't even know was a season until. I just hope they five. film it a little bit more, a little quickly. I hope they, I hope they've already sketched it out. Given the fact that they had the pandemic to contend with, they probably already been doing a treatment for season five, I would assume. <laughs> what and is knock it out. Omar, with your new house, are you going to watch How to Build a Sex Room on Netflix? That's it a thing. On July 8th. How do you got the know? room for it. And what makes you think I wouldn't know how to build one to begin with, James? You always can use advice. Doesn't mean you're an expert on things. You can always use some advice. Right. I don't have a yourself. YouTube channel <laughs> called How to Build a Sex Room. You're absolutely right. I could oh always use advice. God. Thank you for telling me that, James. I can't wait to watch that. Uh, who's the host? Is it uh, not? No, uh, what's his name? Come on. <laughs> Come oh. on. <laughs> Let's see how to build a sex room. It is Melanie Rose, who is a designer. Okay. Well, definitely gonna be watching that. <laughs> I don't know how else to say it. <laughs> Stay tuned for a review of uh, How to Build a Sex <laughs> Room, season one on Near Me Condition. Yeah. Uh, it's probably James Corden with Cat. Oh, my God. Oh, God. Oh, uh, James Corden. You lost me. I got James Corden and Cat CGI. I feel like the Duffer Brothers got lazy with last names like Eddie Munson and Fred Benson. Pretty close, I would say. You know, the, the, they were trying to do the uh, the It movie. They were gonna do. They were one of the people up for the running for the it movie. Wow! But that's why they decided to do Stranger Things. Yeah, and the parallels between the two movies, the yeah, movie and the show, cool. as they came out at the same time, that '80s nostalgia was hard core, and yeah, there was a lot of people made similarities. Not just because Finn Wolfhard also happened to be in both. Yeah, uh, somebody got murdered at. At wow. Star Court Mall in real life. 
Well, our, our local mall still has shootings, apparently, sometimes. We don't really go there that often, but it does have. The town you live in? I don't think they have a mall, do they? Oh, that little... Uh, the, or the city we live near. Ah, okay. <laughs> at the mall. Yeah. Those we do have strip them. malls. Does that count? We still no, have strip no. malls in that town. <laughs> 1985 was the best year. I agree. It was the year I was born. Shut it. Right at the, the end, I, I knocked it out with a bang. They're like, how could this year get any better than December 29th? And I popped out. And it was like, oh, that is the best. This is the best year. What about the December 30th and 31st babies? They'll be fine. It was just <laughs> my night. Screw <laughs> <It's> them. <laughs> uh, yeah. Billy got murdered. <laughs> Not in real life, though. Maybe his really. career, because I haven't seen that guy in anything lately. Hey, speaking of Billy, in that scene with him and Max, did it? feel or look to you like they were reusing footage? Yes, a little bit. And they probably were. It, 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 the way when he was trying to get through the door, it looked like they just used footage from then. I so, didn't think they I had think brought Delcray back, Montgomery back to do stuff. I can't believe you know his name. Okay, cool. Of course you do. Yeah, I think they just, yeah, I think they just used used footage from the season three. Amanda, have you looked at Margot Robbie's <laughs> yes. pictures, major 80s? Have you have you looked at Ryan Gosling's uh, photos on set as Ken? Because, holy crap. So, to be fair. I don't even know what this movie is. What are y'all talking about? I don't it's, Barbie it's about movie? Barbie. Like, she's Barbie. Margaret Ro Robbie is Barbie. Oh, okay. Here, I'll find you a picture. And Ryan I'm Gosling okay. is Ken. You don't Here's a problem. To. My Kens didn't have that bright of hair. Like, bright blonde hair. There's kind of like a like darker color. So, I was like, Ken doesn't have that. Yeah, Turn go ahead. Out. Are you seriously going to say my Ken didn't have that color hair? Did you see what they did to my Transformers? I know you ain't going to go and bitch about no damn Ken. That's true. Hair. Yeah, yeah, that's true. <laughs> what Michael Bay did to my Transformers and Ninja Turtles, I think. I didn't even watch that. Uh, yeah, here, I'll show you. Here's a, I'm going to send you this picture. I'm going to upload this picture for you of them. I appreciate that. You don't have to do me any favors, so. uh, <laughs> though. Right. Only Hulu, all Netflix fans. Man, what the... That would be messed up. Wish I was born in the 80s. I was born in 2000. Surprisingly, got all the references anyways. I'm glad you enjoyed Man, that's cool. My, my, that kiddo, is cool. my kiddo was born in 2009, and she still she loves the 80s. I, it's pretty interesting. Like She likes cassettes and tape recorders and things like that. Show me that picture again. I'm sorry. I was looking at that. What, what, no, what, am, I, what am I looking at here? Uh, Barbie and Ken. On the which I had the Barbie, just that same Barbie with those rollerblades and everything. What's but this Barbie has much more realistic um, dimensions on her body because she's a real human. <laughs> that Barbie has nipples. Obviously, it's different than the toys, Amanda. Yes, it's very different than the and toys. And I'm pretty sure Ryan Gosling did not go. F Never mind. And <laughs> that's for the AMA. <laughs> Wait, the your AMA. Transformers weren't wiry piles of random shapes, right? Oh, gosh. Was Ken originally blonde or did a toy store lie to me with his brown hair? No, my Ken's, I don't remember having a lot of blonde hair. I mean, unless I'm crazy, but well, no, some of them have blonde hair. But like, I'm looking at these vintage Ken dolls. Not all of them were blonde. Okay, some of them were blonde. So are we done with Stranger Things so I can take the banner off? And we are, about, yes. Know, Let's talk, this, yeah, we have a couple of news stories. Um, oh, we do. Oh, well, hold yes, on. a little bit. Well, the one that I thought was really interesting is um, Lena Headey, we all know, is Cersei Lannister. And a lot of other Ooh, things. Terminator, I wanted to talk to you about Chronicles. that. Yeah, I'm glad you're bringing yeah. that up. She so, uh, was sued for $1.5 million by her former agency over scrapped Thor Love and Thunder role. So A... What role and why did they scrap the entire thing that's not going to appear in film? And she's B, gonna play Jane Foster, like an older version. I Actually, love stopping you on your tracks. And you're like, I could see that. Like now that I'm looking at this picture, I'm like, hmm. Her and Natalie Portman. I see. Mm -hmm. Like if they wanted, no, that's never mind. <laughs> but B, like, oh, <laughs> they're seeking their commission. Um, so they're it's seeking commission not only from that, which is like. $500,000, but also from a film called Nine Bullet and another um, scrap series on Showtime called Rita. And so that, that's really interesting. So they still owe, like, the commission if those 
projects don't go through. So wait, so is, is it something that she refused to do in Love and Thunder? No, they just end up on the cutting room floor, which so it sounds to me like it was maybe a cameo, but for 500,000, well. Wait, why are her, why is the agency suing her? Because she, they didn't receive commission for her role, even though it was scrapped. So she got, she got, she got paid. I'm assuming she got paid, but they didn't get paid. Why the hell would an agent need to get paid from? Isn't the agent the one that gets paid? I don't know. By the way, I'm well, not she an left actor. the I'm agency old. in 2020. I don't know. I'd have to ask my sister for the, uh, the specific, but she left we'll, in 2020. We'll get, but get Amy. Paid them. Get, we'll get Amy in here. We'll talk about yeah, her. Yeah, we'll get her in here. We'll do a special story. episode on, on legal issues in mm -hmm. Hollywood. But yeah, that's really interesting. But now all I keep thinking of is what was her role in Love and Thunder? And Am I gonna? I'm gonna be. But next week, all I'm gonna think about is where would Cersei Lannister fit in? No, you're not. You're not. <laughs> as soon as you see Crim's, Chris Hemsworth's backside, the last thing you're gonna think is where is Cersei Lannister during this particular scene? Where would she have been? Yeah, um, <laughs> exactly. I I doubt you're gonna be thinking about her. So, yeah, I thought about that. I had no idea idea how that even works. So Colin is saying a commission is going to be ten to twenty percent of the payment. Yeah, so you can do the math at a five hundred thousand dollars. Wow, that's that's quite a lot of money for a role that you end up not even getting to see on screen. <laughs> How much money do these movies cost? Like, good lord! Oh God, yeah, I'm sure Thor: Love and Thunder costs a real pretty penny. They're really hoping to make that money up next week, which I'm I'm assuming they will. Yeah, I saw that uh, Maverick was doing better than Multiverse of Madness. Oh, 100%. Maverick but, killed. But then he a billion. Madness didn't open everywhere, though, right? There were countries that would not show it. Yeah, but I don't think Tom Top Gun didn't open everywhere either. What like, do you it had, it's, I don't, it's not open in China. So yeah. that's a big, yeah. like... What's wrong with the movie that they didn't open in China? They just didn't... China, no, it's not, that, it's not that anything's wrong. China has really been... No more Absolutely. spoilers. Come back in, Matt. We're done with yeah, spoilers. Yeah, come back come in. Back. Now we're talking about news. Uh, no, it's it's not necessarily because of things, Good point. you know, uh, morality issues or anything like that. A lot of the times, but a the pan their they their theaters have just opened up a lot more recently than ours did, and b they've been really heavy into their like trying to promote their own Chinese products, their own Chinese movies that they aren't doing as many. Uh, Hollywood films making it through, essentially. Mm -hmm. So it's more about that than it is about uh, whatever morality issues. Though, I mean, maybe half-naked Chris Hemsworth uh, could be a factor. You know, because you see his butt. I get it. Let's get see. It. What, Zeus. Yeah. I, got you. I got you. Yeah, I'll not find the that half, Not the half that a lot of ladies and dudes want to see. I get it. Yes. But it's the only half that Disney would let you see. Yes. All right. Let's see here. She was paid around seven million. Seven oh, million. Dollars. Okay. It was supposedly a fairly prominent role, possibly as Gore's wife, and it's being speculated to have been cut because it dragged the pace too much. Can you so, imagine making seven million dollars on a role? That, I mean, maybe she really wanted to be in it though, for like her kids' sake or something. Yeah. No. So that makes me not, interested. Not, not yet, Matt. Maybe. Not maybe yet. Like next year we'll do a. A review no. <laughs> top gun Maverick. we want to see it timing is just not on our side but we everybody want everybody's it. busy i thoroughly enjoyed top gun maverick i didn't even want to see the first one that movie deserved all the money it's earned oh yeah yeah it's killing it man i she, I, I know one of the things you want to mention does that have to do with the canadian casting canadian superhero is that what you want to talk about is it um, Comic and TV news. Yeah, yeah. This is the part that you want to talk about, right? Your dude, Taryn, what's his face? Egerton? No, I did not know he got casted. No, no. For, okay, first of all, <laughs> no, we're not saying that. It's just another rumor that's going around. He wants no. to take over. He I mean, we can talk about the Howard Stern apparently is doing a talk Oh, my gosh. Okay, let's talk do. about that first. What <laughs> the hell? That's such a Sony move, but go ahead. Yeah, so... Howard Stern was hot mic um, or they picked him up on a hot mic. And during that, he's talking to someone. He's not realizing it's recorded or being, you know, that anyone can hear him. And he started talking about he's involved in a Dr. Doom project. <laughs> <laughs> so 
that now is like, wait, is Howard Stern be Dr. Doom? Which is definitely not at all. I mean, I do you have you, you have you seen Private Parts, the movie he did back in the yeah, 90s? Of mm-hmm. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Howard Stern's not the first person I would have picked for Dr. Doom or any Dr. Doom project. <laughs> Howard Stern in movies is you know, I, would, like I, I will say I used to listen to Howard Stern, but 94 to 99, probably. Yeah. Um, and then he went to XM, I think. And then I, I just didn't. Um, what the world it's, needs now more, though, is Fart Man. Can we get a Fart Man movie instead of a yes. Oh, my God. I'll never I'll never forget what some of those early like MTV watching the MTV Video Music Awards and Fart Man being you on there. You knew I was talking about the VMAs, baby. Yes. <laughs> you knew I was talking about the VMAs. Uh-huh. Um, no, but so this is what he said in the hot mic. All right. What do you um, say? This is that the clip is circulating. He says, they're going to over the schedule with me, and it's going to suck. I told you I'm going to do Dr. Doom. That's the thing. But believe me, I'm effing miserable about it. I called RDJ, and I was asking him. He said he called Jr. RDJ. He said RDJ. Yeah. No, he said Robert Downey Jr. I was oh, saying yeah. it. Now I'm explaining it. So I should have just said Robert Downey Jr. <laughs> and I was asking him acting techniques. <laughs> the, the... None of this is, see, this is all staged, Amanda. No way. No. <laughs> yeah. I mean, what if it's that maybe. Are you going to be in it? What about Robin? Are you going to put Robin maybe in Maybe it's like it? some people are thinking maybe he's going to do like an, he's going to interview Dr. Doom, which is still doesn't make any sense like, in the at movie? all. Yeah. In the movie, like it'd be like Howard's turn. You know, I'd, say, I'd say it's just. It's not like this like hot, like interviewee. Like he's not, Howard Stern has always been around, but he's not like the guy that everyone thinks about when it comes to interviewing. He's the shock anymore. DJ in Latveria. Yeah. The shock DJ. No, <laughs> no. What? No. no, I don't, I don't. Maybe he'll get, you know what? Maybe he'll get paid and much like Lena Hetty, he'll, you know, they'll, they'll just not show it. They'll be on the cutting room floor. So whatever it was for, what TD Apparently, personally approached and courted her for the role. Wow. Well, that's awesome. Whatever it was Gore's for. wife makes a lot of sense. Um, yes, that makes a lot of sense. But I wonder if they... What? Kind of, it does? <laughs> well, I was just... I could see her, like, if she's trying to... If I was seeing her in the makeup that, like, Christian Bale's in and stuff, and I could definitely see that whole Oh, period. dude, I'm sorry, Gore. <laughs> what are you talking? Have you thought I met Howard Stern? No, no, no. 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 <laughs> What's his name? The Rock guy. Uh, from from Th- uh, from Thor. Damn it! What's his name? Korg. Yes, I thought you were like <laughs> she could really? be Korg's wife too. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> that's what we were talking about the whole time, and I'm like, why would they pay her seven million dollars to be in like a rock suit or CG and makeup? That seems ridiculous. Make him actually Canadian. Put in the dude from Nickelback. Well, Canado, I'm gonna put you in timeout for even saying Nickelback on the show. Um, in your honest opinions, do all comic book TV shows and movies, be at DC and Marvel, need to be all connected? For me, it depends on the story. Well, I think it's too late for Marvel. Right? Yeah, that, that's a thing that they do. So yeah, they're all maybe now loosely connected, and they can be in their own world, and maybe just loosely, they don't have to be as tied heavily together as, say, like the Infinity Stone story um, or saga, right? Where every story has these stones, and they're all connected. It can be loosely have a connection, and maybe that's where they should go mm-hmm. to let some, so we don't have to force a story into a character for the sake of an overall later on plot. Um, I'm okay with the connected universe. I love that about comics. I love reading when I was a kid, reading X-Men and all of a sudden the Avengers showed up and then vice versa. They'd go over there and hang out with the Avengers. I thought that was really cool. So I like to see that in the movies. Um, I think the DC, DCEU was doing it right though, by, uh, when they did the Shazam movie. I thought that was like a little pocket universe because we never yeah. got to see the Superman from that universe really. She got to see his body. So I thought, yep. yeah, I'm okay with that being in some little universe. I would have gone with Ian McGregor as Dr. Doom. Dude, Ian McGregor can be in anything right now, especially after acting the crap out of it. And freaking, what was that show we just watched? Dr. Obi-Wan. Obi-Wan. Yeah. Obi-Wan. I would, I could see Ian McGregor as a perfectly yeah, good absolutely. Victor Von Doom. Howard Stern um, interviewing Victor Von Doom or Reed Richards would be amusing. If the project is real, Stern is playing himself. But what an interesting okay, choice Victor Von, because Victor Von Doom, maybe. But I what can't. an interesting choice because it's not like Howard Stern is like in our 
pop culture zet guys. It'd almost be like more apt for like James. What Gordon. are you talking about? You, know, people, you know what I mean? People still say Baba Booey? Baba Booey. Come on. No, not you. Okay, never mind. My bad. My bad. I'm going to go look on TikTok and see if all those youngins no, from they, Gen Z are they're still all, They're all Bobby. doing the, the, the Kate Bush song right now. They're busy living They're all that. running up that hill. They're, they're all just running, running up that, that hill. hill. They're not Baba Booey They're anyway. not talking about Baba Booey. It's, it'd probably be for a cameo role, like a podcast or something. Yeah. Too much of a jerk. But it does. Sh- so I'm thinking it's probably going to be for Fantastic Four then, right? Because right now it's the only sh- movie we know is happening within the Fantastic Four universe where Victor Von Doom plays a part. Yeah. Hmm. It depends. Yeah, maybe. Wait, on the that? Oh. Yeah. Uh, Stranger Things 4 feels like they keep adding new characters just to kill them. Well, not all. Unfortunately, the guy with the long hair, I can't even remember his name, that hung out with oh, uh, Will's brother. Stoner he dude. Remember. He still made it. Stoner dude ma- made it. Cillian Murphy would be a fine choice for Victor. Uh, honestly, Phil- Cillian Murphy should just take over the role of Ezra Miller as the Flash because they, he kind of looks like that dude and, a little bit. And they keep just all nope. the hits keep on coming <laughs> for them, man. A connected universe was what got me into comics. The whole lightning rod thing. Jeff Johns was seating for the Flash. Hooked me. Yes! Mm -hmm. Louise, what's up? Stern disowned everyone except Robin and Baba Booey. Guy is a complete fake. I haven't, dude, I haven't listened to Howard Stern. Like I said, I haven't listened to Howard Stern since 1999. He still has a Sirius XM show, right? I think he went over to XM when I stopped listening, and that was many years ago. I don't even know how that guy is still... um, Relevant or around? relevant he was pretty uh he was pretty vocal at the time yeah he said a lot of stupid things too though but you know exactly oh okay um, that that was his name ben Argo, okay. wouldn't die because he was on his duchy plus east lenora well not anymore yeah spoilers for superman and lois season two finale that's earth superman oh. that same one from arrowverse oh interesting i think what? they're wiping that out right, like the whole era. Sure. era. They are going to, yeah. I think they're going to okay start. With that. Yeah. Um. All right. So it's already ten o'clock. So last bit of news because this is interesting. Um. Ten o'clock. Where'd you see that? Uh, on my computer. Oh, okay. my bad. Yeah. It, and so, um, so what Omar was talking about earlier, and then we got way off talking about other stuff, is uh, Taron Egg- Egerton, who we all know and love from Rocket Man or The Kingsman, or if you are have kids uh sing and sing too keep it's going Do none of this is striking a chord nope anyhow nope. he has admitted recently in an interview to the new york times so this is in, he said it to the times which is a mm-hmm. legitimate source that he has met with kevin feige about the possibility of playing a role in the marvel universe so mm-hmm. of course a lot of people have always been a he's been a fan favorite for wolverine if we were going to do another one not for Omar, but for a lot of people. Um, and he, he can actually, play Howard Stern interviewing Doctor Doom. Know, and That's people asked him, play. yeah, people asked him if he was excited to be cast as Wolverine, and he said, um, "Yeah, he'd be excited, but also a little apprehensive because you know Hugh Jackman is Hugh Jackman." And okay, first of all, Wolverine is Wolverine. Okay, I get it. Yeah, Hugh but Jackman also is Hugh Jackman. I get it. Yeah, I know. But, but there was a character a before more- the actor. People Go grew ahead. up with him as Wolverine, so that's gonna be it. It's yeah, hard a lot to, of people did. I get it, but yeah. yeah, it's like you like it's like how would you replace Giant Depp and someone else be Captain Jack Sparrow? You just don't. And now Disney owns his image anyway, so it doesn't matter. Like, you get Colin Colin Farrell to do it because then he replaces. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, obviously these guys look alike. Yes. Uh, okay. Yeah. No. No. Thank you. I I wish him luck. I hope that he gets casted as an Eternal for Eternals two. No, yeah. that's not ha- like no. He's been, huh. he's gonna he's a big. He's, they'll give him something. Maybe I'm sorry. Did you say? Rewind. What if bit. he's Johnny Storm? Fine, whatever. He could be Johnny Storm. How old's this guy? Oh, I don't know 20? how old he is. He's in his. He's probably in his late twenties. I would assume. Too old. To play Johnny Storm. Oh, could you yeah, want? He needs to be a fifteen-year-old to sign a thirty-five-year-old or thirty-five-year yeah. contract with Marvel. Yeah, you want well. I would say you. I, I always wanted like a younger one, eighty nine. So he's like around my age. Yeah, well, he's around my age. When Your age? He's in his thirties. I lied. So he's in yeah. his thirties. But you know, depends on what they're looking for in that role. So it could be that. 
Uh, from 10 Things I Hate About You to The Dark Knight, people can surprise you. Absolutely. Oh, Absolutely. yeah, 100%. I'm just saying, I, for me personally, it's not it's not about him. I think he's, you know, whatever. He's, honestly, I don't really, I don't remember him in hardly anything except Kingsman, really. Um, it, it's more about, like, the name of some other guy. I just, I've wanted a no name for so long for a character like Wolverine because Wolverine himself is a persona. Like, it's a type of character. Yeah. Uh, everyone wants, like, Hugh Jackman is going to be Wolverine. Bo yeah, right? Remember that? Like, people are like, he's too tall. He's too good looking. But now people that grew up with that character or some of us that just went to see the movie are like, oh, yeah, well, he killed it as Wolverine. He did a great job. Mm -hmm. Yep, and that's all everyone thinks about now. No, and man, I beg to differ, dude. Comic, I remember working in a comic book store, and people were like, "There's no way that guy can play Wolverine. He's way too good looking and way too tall." And that's just the way it is. That is the way it is. Uh, but oh, he was the voice of Ryan in Dark Crystal. Do you remember him in that lovely? I don't, I don't like to talk about that show because it broke my heart. Because it's it was wonderful and Netflix no yeah. they didn't break your heart Netflix broke your heart just like with Anne with an E yeah. even if yeah. they gave the actress a, we didn't even talk about her being in season I know four. it was I weird think. I just see her in season four as Robin's love interest it's one of those so things bad. will she won't they is it like the Will and Mike thing yes and it's so and she's so I love that actress she's adorable even in that role she's too she's so, so over dramatic I love her I know oh God they could talk so fast. I thought I was a fast talker, but those girls, dang, they knock it out of the park. Man. No one knew who he was. No one cared, to be honest, at least near me. Yeah, people cared. Comic book fans, man. They're not, they're like Star Wars fans. Hard to please. I think every fan is hard to please. It's rough. It, it is really it rough, is rough to be tall and good like. looking. You're <laughs> right. Rough. Hugh Jackman's got it rough. Yes. Um, any okay. else? No, nothing else. All right. I guess that's the last time we see you with that shirt on because uh you know it's kind of rest of never say what no what <laughs> <laughs> i'll wear this shirt forever and no, i'm just kidding sign us off kiddo yes all right thank you guys so much for watching don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button and remember to follow us on all of our social media channels at, at near make con remember to check us out on spread shop if you want some great near make condition merchandise and also check us out on patreon if you want to support us for a dollar a month or more um support our channel so that we can keep doing all these great things and entertaining you um at all hours of the day and night not all hours but if you do a patreon level maybe all hours i don't know it depends on level I quit making promises i cannot <laughs> tell what is and last but not least guys if it's classy and cool it must be your mint good journey we will see you all next week we're seeing thor early so that we can do a friday review yeah so we'll be seeing you all at eight o'clock for Thor, Love and Thunder. I should have let you just finish that. I'm sorry. Bye, everybody. Bye, everyone. Bye.